This broadcast of Yo Football is brought to you in part by Cameron Autoplex, your Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Ebco Development by Melanie Romine, your Edward Jones representative. Buckle State Bank in Cameron Buckles and Rogers. By Budget Host Inn and Suites. Cox's Heating and Air Conditioning. By Syntex Auto in Temple. Just Chiropractic of Temple. Denials, Furniture, Flooring and Fireplaces. By Citizens National Bank. Cameron Farm and Ranch Company. By Milam County Livestock Auction in Cameron. Temple Heat and Air. By Lisa Roden, your Germania Insurance Agent. Caliber Metal of Cameron. By Central Avenue Bistro in Cameron. Legacy Nursing and Rehabilitation. And by Standards Home Health. And now, it's game time with Brett Everhart and Kenny Driska. It is Rivalry Night in Texas as two teams with one of the all-time... Will square off tonight for Milam County bragging rights. And not to steal from the Rose Bowl, but this one is the granddaddy of them all as Cameron Yohai hits up the Rockdale Tigers in Rockdale tonight for the 66th Annual Battle of the Bell. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Everhart alongside Kenny Driska here tonight. The Battle of the Bell is here, though. Both teams coming in on different trajectories. Um, in fact, entirely different resumes when you look at it. Yo, 3-1, 1-0 District play. Rockdale sitting at 2-3, and 0-1. Oh and, and the Tigers are coming off a shocking upset loss to McGregor last week. Well, Kenny, when we get into this game, we're going to get to the McGregor game in a moment, but all the records aside, really, you can throw those out the window, right? Oh, yeah, you absolutely can throw every bit of the records out the window on this one. It doesn't matter if one team's 5-0, and other team's 0-5. Uh, the team that's 0-5 could jump up and beat the snot out of the 5-0 and team, um, and you can bet that it's going to be some hard hits, and, and everybody's just going to get after each other out there tonight. For the Tigers, they are reeling three straight losses and then a surprising loss last week to open district. Uh, these guys open the year as the district favorites, but really struggling right now. What do you make of that? Yeah, you know, they're, they're definitely struggling right now. You know, um, you have to remember they lost their quarterback, the guy that was going to be their starting quarterback uh, at the beginning of the season uh, in the first half of the first game, you know. Um, and then, of course, the Kobe Mitchell kids come in and done a really good job for them. But still, you know, when, when you spend all offseason long, you know, game plan, and, and preparing and, and everything, you know, that's just not it, – it's tough to overcome, you know, a position like the quarterback where that's the guy that – the one guy other than the center that's going to touch the ball every single play. All right, we heard Yo head coach Tommy Brashear this morning talk about how talented the Tigers are year in, year out. However, this is a brand-new head coach in his first year running this program. He's a Jeff Miller protege, I don't, I, so I want to make sure we, we're clear on that. But things haven't really gone according to plan for him. Uh, starting QB, of course, as you just mentioned, was lost for the year, and, and now it's a losing record entering this game. Um, offensively, though, nothing has really changed for the Tigers. You've got playmakers all over the ball, and here's what Tommy had to say this morning. Well, they're a spread uh, offense. They're, they're very multiple. They'll be in some one back and some two back, and they'll be in some empty no backs. Uh, you know, they're, we're a shotgun. They're a pistol. Only difference is in a pistol, the running back's behind the quarterback instead of uh, to his side and stuff like that. But um, they're, they've got lots of big play threats, and that's going to be a big key tonight is preventing those big plays, uh, you know, uh, in, in the ball game. When we get them in second and third and longs, and we got to get them in those first, but once we get them in those second and third and longs, we've got to prevent those, uh, those plays. And the, most of those big plays come in the past game in those situations, although, uh, and they will throw it to, to Cameron out of the backfield as well. He's got good hands. He's a he's a running back that can kind of do it all. But uh, lots of lots of great athletes over there. Lots of big play potential. Uh, we got to prevent that. Um, you know, some of their top players, number nine, Mitchell's now moved to quarterback since uh, Jace Robinson got hurt, uh, you know, uh, in that first game of the year for him. Mitchell's kind of a, he's more of a dual threat kind of guy. Uh, you know, he's not a bad passer at all. He can he can complete the passes down the field. He's a guy that's going to scramble out of there and, and uh, you know, extend those plays, and he's still looking down the field to throw that ball. So it's going to be a big key for our, our secondary to stay in coverage and uh, not, not – come off their coverage when things like that happen uh, tonight. That'll be a big key for us uh, when he does scramble out of that pocket. Big key for us also is to try and prevent him and kind of contain him uh, so that when he does scramble out of that pocket, we can uh, limit that time as much as possible and, and try and get him to get that ball out of his hands. Uh, number three, Valdez, a running back. Uh, you know, we talked about him, D1 recruit. Uh, he's kind of the all, all kind of, he can do it all. He can run, he can catch. Uh, he, he protects pretty well in protection as well uh, in the passing game. So, uh, good, really good player for him. Number seven, Raven, wide receiver. Uh, probably maybe had the most big plays for him this year. Uh, in number seven, they like to try to throw it to him deep. Um, 
in the passing games, although they will get it to him in the quick game also. He's very fast and try and let him go and make people miss. But uh, that's a guy we definitely got to know where he is on the field as well. And then and they got another one, number 10, Dansby, at wide receiver. Uh, he's a guy that likes to throw the fade routes to on the sideline and slants and post routes to. Uh, so, you know, they, they've definitely got some weapons over there. And, and uh, you can't just stop one person and expect to win. You, they've got multiple people you got to be worried about. So, uh, you know, we, we've got our hands, you know, we've got our hands full tonight defensively. But, uh, you know, but I, you know, I feel like our kids can, can go out there and, and, and make some plays as well. So it'll be fun. All right, let's get a breakdown from Tommy Brashear on the defense. Well, they base out of a 3-4 defense. Uh, they like to run man to man cover, you know, cover zero, but man to man coverage. But they also mix in some cover two and some cover three and some cover four. So they'll mix up their coverages on the back end. Um, you know, they, they like to, uh, they like to bring linebackers. Uh, they like to bring stunts with linebackers, inside backers, outside backers. They like to kind of create some stuff, you know, uh, by bringing those guys. And, uh, you know, so O-line will have their work, you know, commu- work cut out for them communicating and having their eyes up and seeing what's coming and things like that. So, uh, we've been, been real proud of that group. They're, they're growing and getting better and better each week. So that's been fun to see out of our O-line, but they're going to have, you know, definitely have their work cut out for them, uh, um, tonight. Uh, you know, some of the same guys we, we talked about a little bit already. Very experienced group. Uh, defensively, the key players, number eight, Mayberry, is a, a third-year starter for him on the varsity. Uh, D lineman, uh, good-sized young man, does a good job for him up front. Uh, number 10, Dansby, who we talked about at receiver, also plays corner for him. Uh, you know, kind of a lockdown-type corner for him, does a good job. Uh, number two, Mayfield, is an outside linebacker, uh, pro- probably the Pretty good linebacker. He's probably their best linebacker out of the crew. And, and then number seven, uh, Raven, we talked about him as a receiver also, a big play threat receiver. He plays safety for him, does a good job of, in coverage and trying to help them prevent those big plays. All right, so that is a preview on the offensive defense for the Rockdale Tigers. So let's get to some pregame keys tonight. What are the keys to the game from, brought to you by Amari Burns Laywell Funeral Hall? Kenny? Yeah, I think the first one is you're going to have to handle the emotions of a game like this. You know, um, it, obviously it's the battle of the bell. It's the biggest game on your schedule all season long. So you're going to have to handle those emotions. Uh, and, and then in addition to that, you know, you've got Rockdale that their back is kind of against the wall after losing three in a row, losing a, a district ball game last week that they were heavily favored in. And so, you know, they're going to come out with everything they've got right at the start of this ball game. And so you're going to have to handle that, you know, that initial uh, uh, push and initial uh, uh, emotions at the very beginning of the game. And then so, we just, you know, we got to play clean uh, all game long, you know, not have any turnovers, limit our penalties, uh, um, play assignment deep, uh, assignment defense and, and then execute on offense. It is the annual Battle of the Bell. This is a series that traditionally Cameron has dominated. 44 wins in the 66 tries. And uh, Cameron, of course, has possession of the Bell, winning each of the last two years, last year at dominant fashion. Yeah, and, you know, that's one of my favorite memories, uh, Brett, was the first year uh, I think I was at the Battle of the Bell game. It was a year that we didn't have the Bell before that, and we won the, the game. And, and afterwards, uh, just all the it, – it's kind of like a college-type pageantry with everything with, the, the you know, the Bell and – and, you know, wheeling the bell over to the sideline and spray painting it, you know, our school colors right then and there. You know, that is just, it's a really special thing. It is. I believe we are coming up on the national anthem here in just a moment. We'll also bring you starting lineups and much more as we are nearing the first kick here tonight. To our country and community, as the future farmers of America raise our nation's flag and the big blue band from Tigerland plays our national anthem.
There you are. That is the national anthem here tonight. That means we are just moments away from kickoff here in this annual rivalry game between these two teams, Rockdale and Cameron. It's what an interesting matchup this has been over the last decade or so, I guess you could call it, where it's been a fairly even matchup, really, between these two teams. Yeah, I think we, we probably hold just a slight edge over the last ten years, but it, you know, it kind of has gone back and forth a little bit, so um, we need to come out and, you know, exert our dominance and let them know that the bell belongs over on our side of the river. Let's get to the game day captains. That's Eduardo Gill, Zecora against Spikes, and Trent Nix, the senior game day captain, is Colby Carranza. That's Zecora against Spikes is going to be the man doing the coin toss. And joined with, with him will be number three. That is going to be Cameron Valdez. Coin toss from midfield brought to you by Juana's Mexican Restaurant. It's going to be tails, so Rockdale will win the toss. Rockdale is elected to receive. Cameron, who are you going to take the football first. That's an interesting strategy, Kenny. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised at that. You know, I feel like in this day and time, everybody likes to defer um, and, and try to, you know, put their defense out there first and let, let them, you know, kind of get lathered up, massaged up a little bit before they, they get out there with their offensive group. But, you know, I guess they feel like they need to go out and, and try to assert themselves early. So, um, not really surprised by it, but uh, it definitely is an interesting call for sure. Let's get to the starting lineups now, brought to you by Barrel Bump Smokers, specializing in ugly drum style smokers. You can find them on Facebook, and they've got some really interesting stuff to get to that in a moment. But let's get to the defense, because they'll be on the field first. The defensive line, Kashawn Johnson, Eduardo Gill, and Trent Nix. The linebackers, Landon Green, Colton Barbo, Fabian Solomon, and Armando Reyes. The cornerbacks are Iverson Brazil and Zachary and Spikes. The safeties, Pharrell Hemphill and Randy Flores. Offensively, receivers Farrell Hemphills and Corrigan Spikes, Jaden Sanchez and Casey Goolsby. The offensive line features Colby Carranza, Colby Artie, Hunter Huck, Scarfield England, and Cash Gellner. The quarterback is Zane Zinert. And the carrying with the rock will be Fabian Bynum, who had a monster game a week ago. Yeah, and, and a young man that's really started to exert himself in, in the backfield for the Yeoman, which is good to see after, you know, having a couple running backs that were there for, for a long period of time. That was a, that was a big question mark for us coming in. We knew him Hill and Spikes were going to be good out on the edge, but we weren't sure who the guy in the backfield was going to be. So it's glad to, glad to see uh, Fabian come out and, and earn that position and, and really take a hold of it. Come getting ready for our opening kickoff now, brought to you by ENR Cattle Company in Burlington, the Yeoman, of course. Lost the toss, will be kicking off. Rockdale won and elected to receive. So that we are getting ready for the kickoff of the 66th annual Battle of the Bell here in Rockdale. But it's still a pretty stadium here at Rockdale. Only a, what, a couple of years old now? Yeah, yeah. I think I think last year was maybe the first year of it. Uh, so, yeah, second year of it. Well, a short pooch kick that will be fielded by the Tigers at the 40 on a fair catch. And that's where Rockdale will start with it here tonight. So the Tigers coming out here tonight with lovely uniforms, actually, by Rockdale here tonight. It's going to be the dark blue with gray pants and a gold helmet. Yeoman coming out in all white with maroon letters. I love the icy white look, man. I love it. I'm, I'm a big fan of the icy whites. So the Tigers will come out first and ten. They'll have the ball at their own 40-yard line. Just underway here in the Battle of the Bell. From the shotgun. Quarterback hands off. Off the middle, and finding no running room. Back to the line of scrimmage, he will get forward progress. And I think that was uh, Barbo and um, Hemphill, and I think on the time, was that Hemphill? No, that's not Hemphill, I'm sorry, that's number six, Armando Reyes. My eyes failed me for a minute there, I thought that was number eight. I said, well, Hemphill's out here at this corner on this side, it couldn't have been him. Second down and ten down for the Tigers. Eleven and a half minutes to go here in this first quarter, brought to you by Raptor P. Trucking. Nice job getting them behind the sticks early here. Two receivers off to the right side. Quarterback hands off around the right side. That is Valdez with the football. Looking for running room. Breaks through one tackle. And then is going to be upended and across the 45 and the 46. Man, and upended is a great description of that play right there. Brett Farrell came in up from his corner position. And, and, and really no other way to describe it other than upended him. Gain of six to bring up a third and four. Actually, I believe that was Raven who was actually on the carry. My bad. That was number seven with the football. 
Now a third down and about five. Now quarterback going to take off around the right side. He's going to elude the first tackler, then elude another, and then goes out of bounds just near that first down marker at midfield. And I think he may have enough. It is good for I thought the initial marking was short of the 50, but it looks like they're going to mark it. Well, they just marked it just short of the 50, but they're still saying that was enough for the first down. So um, we had a couple guys with a shot at him there, and they slowed him down, but you got to get him on the ground. So Mitchell did a good job there scrambling around. That's one of the things that Coach Brashear said the Yellman will have to be aware of is the scrambling ability of this quarterback. Mitchell from the shotgun trips off to his left side, hands the ball off on first down, and meeting a wall of defenders into 50, and he will immediately go down. And that is Cameron Valdez. Yeah, yeah, that's Cameron Valdez, and that's big Eduardo Gill uh, beating his man up at the line of scrimmage there and making initial contact at the line of scrimmage, and, and uh, then Colton Barbo coming in uh, and finishing it off for a one-yard gain. So a second and nine now, 10 minutes and 18 seconds and counting down here in this Raptor Peach Rucking first quarter. Trips off to the left as the Tigers move from left to right on the radio dial. We'll back the pass as Mitchell now scrambling around to his left. He's going to roll, 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 still looking, still looking, backpedaling and throws off his back foot. That ball's tipped away at a great defensive play. I tell you, he what a great job that young man does of keeping, you know, the play alive using his athleticism there, uh, and not just you know throwing away, not just you know trying to run it. Uh, and you know, the receiver broke open for a second there, but I, I, I couldn't see the yeoman's number, uh, but definitely made a nice uh, recovery there and knocked the ball away at the last second. Yeah, just an incredible athletic ability by the quarterback for the Tigers, and that ball. Had he been able to throw off his front foot, I think he's got a shot at a completion because the receiver was by the defense. Yeah, Meanwhile, for sure. Third down and nine now for the Tigers. Had a two-back set. Takes a handoff. Throws up the middle. And that ball's caught up around the 40-yard line. Should be right around the first down marker. And I believe he's going to have it up at the Yo 39. I think that's uh, Big Dansbury, the big six foot four inch wide receiver there. Yeah, it is uh, on the reception. Just kind of, you know, getting in the middle of the field and posting up there, right there, using his height and his size there. Uh, that's that's tough to defend when you've got a wide receiver with that kind of size. First and ten for the Tigers. Inside of ten minutes to go here in this Rafter P. Trucking first quarter. And Rockdale on the move. They are off the 039 yard line. First and ten. Setting a man in motion. That's Raven. High snap. Hands off. That is going to be for uh, Crawford. He is going to be into the tie, the 10. Touchdown, Rockdale Tigers. Yeah, they used the Raven right there to kind of draw our eyes away from Cameron Valdez. And, and uh, he was able to hit a seam there. And that young man, you know, he's been recruited by just about everybody in the nation. Uh, once he gets a little opening right there, he's going to be tough to tough to tough, tough to. 39-yard run by Cameron Valdez and Rockdale out in front early. Six to nothing. Extra point now coming for the Tigers. Snap is down and the kick is going to be blocked by the Elbert. So six to nothing will be our new score. Nine and a half minutes to go here in this first quarter. And the Elbert trailing six to nothing. As the Tigers jump out in front, we'll be back in just a moment. This is Yo Football at 105 with the Ranch. Power. Power is being behind the wheel of a Ram 3500 with 1,000 pounds per foot of torque. Power is a 12-inch touchscreen and a 395 horsepower Hemi V8. Ram Power Days are going on now at Cameron Autoplex in Cameron, Texas. If you count on your truck, then you can count on Cameron Autoplex to deliver the right truck for you. We have the selection and the pricing our customers deserve. We are your Central Texas Truck Authority. Shop in person or online at CameronAutoplex.com. And remember, it's always cheaper in Cameron. Welcome back here into Rockdale at Tiger Stadium. The Rockdale Tigers out in front of the Cameron Yellman here, the 66th annual Battle of the Bell. Six to nothing is the score. Nine and a half minutes on the clock here in this Raptor Peach Rucking first quarter. Now the Tigers, who struck first, will be kicking away to the Yellman now. Rockdale had that extra point blocked, and we'll see if that plays a factor later in this ballgame. It looks like they're lining up to employ a angle kick of their own towards uh, Case and Goolsby and uh, Jaden Sanchez. Number one, the Korean Spikes. Well, two men are back, but shallow for Cameron. That will be a shallow kick coming up to get it at the 30-yard line. Now working his way upfield, up across the 35, towards midfield, and finally will be stood up and then blocked. 
will have it first in 10 at the 37-yard line. Good job by Pharrell right there getting it. And, uh, you know, he was obviously not going to make it all the way across the field to his to his wall. And so made as many yards as he could and uh, just, you know, got what he could get there. Actually, it looked like they put that at the 36. So first to 10 from the 36. Yo football, they'll come out, moving right to left on the radio dials. It's win back set here for the Yolma. They've got two receivers off to the left. And it will be a keeper by the quarterback. Tries to find his way, spits out of the first tackle, and then will pick up nice yardage for about six. And I think we're going to have defensive offsides on that. I believe they jumped uh, with them allowing the play to go through. That tells me it was on the defense, not the offense. So it uh, should be first and five after the penalty is marked off here. Five-yard penalty for the next first down. So a penalty against the Tigers. And a nice run by Zane Zeinert. And I like what Coach Brashear and Coach Zainer are doing there, uh, you know, getting Zane involved in the action early on, kind of getting him loosened up and lathered up. So it will be first and five for Cameron. They've got three receivers off to the right side for Zainer. in a five-man set. It looks like somebody jumped again as Zainer lets it fly. That's going to be the... Screen pass off to the right side, breaks through a couple of tackles. Now on his horse at the 40, makes a move here, but he is finally going to be tackled just at the 33-yard line. Yeah, that's something that, that we thought that they might do, and that's just really come after us up front. I mean, they they had seven in the box, and they were just they had their ears pinned back, and they were coming after us. Uh, I think they, they jumped the gun a little bit again, but great job by Zane of getting it out to Zakorian Spikes quickly, and Zakorian getting behind a couple blocks and making some nice yardage on that play. From the Tigers, 32 now after the big game. The Ullman come out with three receivers to the right side, two to the left, another five-man set. And Rockdale looks... They've got a crowd on the line. Looks for a quick pass off to his right. And that ball's incomplete. It looks like we were trying to get spikes again there on a quick hitch play, uh, but they, they they had pretty good coverage right there. But that's the thing, when, and they're coming quick, and so we are going to have to you know release the ball pretty quick here. So for uh, will be second down and ten here for the Goldman. 8.40 on the clock after the incomplete. Yelma moving around. They'll have three receivers off to this wide side of the field here to the near side. That's Seidert's left. Seidert looks that way trying to set up a screen pass. That is Spikes, but he is going to be wrapped up in the backfield at a loss. Yeah, that one was read well by uh, Davion Scott, uh, the... Uh I believe he's a senior defensive back for the for the uh, Tigers there. Ends up as about a six-yard loss for the Yolman. It'll be third down and long. So third and 16 now. Clock coming up on eight minutes to go here in this first quarter. Yolman go back to a four-wide receiver set. Twins to each side. And Zyner looking to throw. Now rolling to his right. Still rolling. Being chased from behind, and he's going to let one go. That's going to be caught near the 20-yard line, and that will be a complete pass and puts the Yeoman into the Blink Box Boutique Red Zone. Nice job by Zane right there using his feet to keep the play alive, and then great job by Jaden Sanchez uh, kind of sitting down, finding a little soft spot in that zone downfield, uh, you know, past the sticks to get the first down on the third and long. That was a huge pass. Ends up as about an 18-yard completion to Sanchez. And now first and 10 after the Centex Auto first down. Yo, but have it first and 10 at the Tigers 18 inside the Blue Box Boutique Red Zone. Yo, will come out with a single receiver off to the left side and a twin back set. Two off to the right as Zyner takes a handoff. Now he's looks like he may have had a busted play. He looks to have one off, and there's nobody near to his left. He ends up plowing forward for a couple of yards. Yeah, definitely a busted play there. Our backs went to the right, and Zane thought they were going left, and so I'm not sure who made the mistake there. But, you know, <laughs> Zane recognized that, hey, there was a little bit of space there. Uh, I'm going to get on upfield and get what I can get. Clock continues to run here. They're after Pete trucking first quarter. Seven minutes and ten seconds. Counting down. Yelma trailing 6 to nothing here in this first half in the 66th Annual Battle of the Bell. Yelma threatening here in the Blue Box Boutique Red Zone. Twin receivers to each side here for Zyner. Facing a second down and eight. Zyner looks to his right. Goes that way. Looking for the out route. He's got a man. That should be a first down. 
Same play that we had a lot of success with last week uh, against Caldwell, running the outside guy deep and then taking the inside receiver and, and running a quick out pattern uh, underneath him, and Zane hitting him right in stride for the first down. Another Centex Auto first down to buy here, pay here, neither. With easy financing and excellent service, two locations at Temple. Elvana now facing first and goal from the Tigers' eight. Here in the Bling Box Boutique Red Zone. That's the Bling Box, 111 North Central, downtown Cameron. Single receiver off to the left for Zyner. It's going to be an option around the left side. Trying to find some running room, but he's not going to find a lot of that. Picks up maybe a yard or two, and that's about it. I think it was pretty much going to be just a straight kind of quarterback sweep there with big Keyshawn Johnson leading the way. Uh, but the Rockdale defense is stiffening up down here, you know, Brett. They, they want that bell, so they're not going to just let us walk in the end zone. A second and a goal. It'll be at the seven-yard line. Second and goal for the Omen here, trailing six to nothing. Twin backs here for the Omen as they send two receivers off to the right, one to the left. And Zyner looks to hand off, try to find the edge around the right side. It's going to be across the five-yard line, breaks a tackle, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Yeoman. And that's that hand sweep to uh, Pharrell Hemphill. He snuck into the backfield on that play, lined up as one of the, the twin backs with Keyshawn Johnson leading the way. And uh, for, Pharrell is just too fast for them to be able to keep him from out of the end zone on the corner there. With 6.03 on the clock, the Yeoman have tied it up at six apiece. Now an extra point try is coming. For the old special teams. There's the snap, the hole, there's the kick, and that is no good. Yeah, wide left. Uh, snap and the hole were good, but the kick just shot wide left from the beginning. Both teams have missed the extra point, and it remains a 6 6 ball game. With that, We'll take a break. 6.03 on the clock. It's tied here the, in Rockdale. This is your football at 105 with the Ranch. So you're feeling out of alignment. Don't ignore the signs and think maybe they'll go away. Head straight to Just Chiropractic in Temple and see Dr. Barbara Proctor. With over 20 years' experience, she'll get you adjusted and on your way with no hassles, contracts, or startup costs. Just Chiropractic is the home of the affordable adjustment, offering $20 final adjustments anytime. No appointments necessary and no insurance needed. It's Just Chiropractic, located at 1915 West Avenue in Temple, or call 254-791-5045. Welcome back here in Rockdale as we're all knotted up at 6. 6.03 on the clock here in the Ranter Peach Rucking first quarter. Let's get to the scoring drive. Brought to you by Don's Painted Body with more than 20 years' experience. He'll take the dents out of accidents. And that drive is 7 plays, 60 yards, and Hemphill scores on a 7-yard touchdown run. The prior collision extra point was no good. And so 6-all is where we stand. The open now kicking off. It's going to be a high, short kick. And they'll come up and field that at about the 28-yard line. Trying to find a middle of the field. And then we'll finally go down up across the 32 to the 33. Nice job by Colton Barbo, the middle linebacker for the Yeoman, getting down there making the tackle on special teams. Less than six minutes to go here in this first quarter. All tied up at six. This has been an exciting first couple of series so far. Yeah, you know, both offenses looking very polished. You know, nobody looking like they have any nerves on the offensive side of the ball tonight at all. So first and ten now for the Tigers from their own 33-yard line. We're able to score on an eight play, 64-yard drive. Their first time out, they'll send two receivers off to the left side. They've got an up back and one man in the backfield. Now two as one man goes in motion, but here comes a flag. Yeah, they've got a false start on either the left offensive guard or offensive tackle there. False start, number 50 of the offense, five-yard penalty. They had a man come in motion, and when they did, they kind of had a, a number advantage over here on the left side of our defensive line. And so our defensive line shifted to the left, and when they did, a young man jumped off sides. So after a five-yard penalty... First and 15 now for the Tigers. And they'll come out this time. A single receiver off to the left side, two off to the right. Valdez in the backfield. Takes the handoff. They're looking for Raven, and he is going to be blitzed by the safety. Incomplete pass. I tell you, uh, Jaden Sanchez read that play all the way. They ran the 
the where they kind of fake the zone read and then trying to hit Raven on a quick skinny slant. And uh, Sanchez looked like he was shot out of a cannon and just uh, almost picked that ball off. And if he did, it was going to be Katie bar the door. He was going to take it to the house. That was a that was a punishing collision there. To make it to the playoffs. Second down and 15 Maybe down for the Tigers. Again with two receivers to the right side for Mitchell. He's going to hand off here to Valdez. He's going to break through about three tacklers and then finally he's going to be drugged down after a six-yard gain. And that's Sanchez coming up from his uh, safety position to make the initial contact with uh, Colton Barbo coming in and helping to finish him off from his middle linebacker spot. Just a handful of plays we've seen from Valdez. We, you know, we, we mentioned, or you have mentioned, that he's. Uh, this is a guy heavily recruited by a lot of D1 schools. You know, I expected the speed. We've seen that, but uh, the power's there too. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing. You know, if you're going to play Division One football running back, you can't just be fast. You better be strong too. A third down and nine now for the Tigers. Two to the short side of the field. Looking that way is Mitchell now looking to his left. He's going to roll to his right. Breaks out of an ankle tackle. Then lets one go. That ball is going to be caught up across the field. He's going to break through one tackle. Still on his feet. Tries to stiff arm and then finally goes down. That is a huge game for the Tigers. Wow, absolutely unbelievable. We had two shots at uh, at Mitchell in the backfield and just uses his athleticism to, to keep the play alive and then to find a big six-foot-four-inch uh, wide receiver there. Uh, uh, that, that's, a, that's tough to defend when they've got that much time back there. From the O side at the 36-yard line, inside of five minutes to go here in this first quarter handoff. Still spinning around and still on his feet. is going to be the tailback, but he finally goes down after about three spins around. And I wonder if he's busy. Or is he? Yeah, <laughs> I hope he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. We, that, we, we need him to be dizzy and not just be a whirling dervish. That is right. Again, this score is tied at six here in this first quarter. Inside of four and a half minutes to go. It'll be a second down at nine. Coming up here for the Rockdale Tigers. Twin receivers to each side. One in the backfield with Mitchell. And they will hand off down here to Valdez. And he is going to power forward for about three yards. Again, Colton Barbo doing a good job at inside linebacker spot, making the first contact right there. They they really have not blocked Colton uh, yet tonight. So a third down and five for the Tigers coming up at the 31-yard line. Inside of four minutes to go in this first quarter. The score is tied at six. Again with twin receiver sets for Mitchell. Looking to throw. Looks to his left. Now he's being chased around. He's going to try to get out of one tackle. Instead, it's going to be a fumble. The Olman have recovered at the 40-yard line, and it's going to be a pile for it. And finally, he will go down, but a turnover and a costly one here by the Tigers. And I think that was Fabian Bynum playing a little big defense right there coming in uh, with the, the kind of the corner blitz there, and then uh, Keyshawn Johnson, I think, definitely uh, picked up the ball on the fumble there and secured it for the Yeoman. So a turnover, that was the Yeoman have been in the backfield chasing around Kobe Mitchell for well, so far for the since the start of the game, and got to him there. Yeah, yeah, the, the Mitchell kid is really good, but we finally got to him and was able to, to get a piece of him there. So after the turnover, less than three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Zyder looking to hand the ball off, he does. Up the middle on a nice little play to Bynum, but he is going to hop step and dive this way and that, and still gets across the midfield to about the Tigers' 49. I tell you what, Fabian put a dead leg move on a guy right there that he did it last week. It was the first time I've seen him do it all season long and made the guy look silly last week from Caldwell. He just made one of them Rockville Tigers fall smooth out of his shoes. It ends up as a Sentex auto first down for the Yeoman. And now coming up on two and a half minutes to go in this first quarter. Twin receivers off to the right side for Zyder. One man along to the left now going across the formation. And they are going to hand it to him. And I believe that is Spikes with the football. And he is going to take the end around and pick up about four, three, four yards. Yeah, basically a jet sweep over the right-hand side, just uh, you know, get, getting the ball in our, our fastest player's hands and letting him see what he can do with it there. We've seen that increase as the season has gone along. They have found ways to get the football to Spikes and Hemphill. Yeah, Cash Gellner uh, limping off on that play under his own power uh, without having to have any stoppage there, but you know, that's something we want to watch right there. We hate to see any injuries on the Yeoman side or ball. We don't see it on Rockdale side either, but uh, hate to see any injuries, period. A couple of minutes to go in this first quarter. 
quarter. Quick throw here. That is going to be... I'm not sure if he caught that or not. They do say he caught that, I think. Right there at the 40-yard line. That was uh, a catch by Randy Flores for the Omen, and that puts the Omen at third and short. Third and one at the Tigers' 40-yard line. Real quick little... Uh, uh, her curl pattern right there by Flores. Nice job of going in and kind of scooping the ball up off the turf to secure the, the pass. Give us a short and, or a third and short for you know an opportunity to make the first down here. Third down and one for the Omen. Then 22 to go. It's a game that's tied at six. Twin back set for the Omen. Single receivers to each side and now the Omen has made an error. A flag comes down on a false start on the line. And our our, uh, our tight end jumped right there and for really, I'm not sure why. Uh, we, we, we weren't even really all completely set and ready to snap the ball there. So a uh, mental mistake by the Yeoman right there. We've got to cut those out and uh, get this first down here. So now a third and six as this will be a handoff. Trying to come up the middle. He's going to be short of a first down. And Gets up to about the 41-yard line. It'll be fourth down for the Omen down. Number five, so fourth Biden, and two carry. after the carry Tiger by Bynum. By number two, Chase Mayfield. I would assume we'll definitely go for it here on three. Rockdale's side of the field. Short yardage. Four, uh, fourth and two. We'll we have see. a couple substitutions, so it'll be interesting to see what we do here. Got about 45 seconds until we start the second quarter. And Zyner comes out. And he will back up to about midfield. And he's going to be punting this ball. And that is going to be a monster punt. Giving chase is the safety, but that's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, I hate that that, uh, that he didn't angle that a little bit more there to try to, you know, pin them deep. I uh, hate, hate to, to you know, punt that there and only end up, you know, with a net about, what, 20 yards or so. So, after the punt by the Yelvin. That'll be a takeover by the Tigers from their own 20-yard line. There's 32 seconds to go here in this Raptor Peach Trucking first quarter. And this has been an exciting first quarter for, really, for both teams. A uh, couple of early touchdowns, and then we've seen a couple of drives stall for either team. One via fumble, one via a punt. So, 32 seconds, all tied up at six. Tigers have the football first and ten. Single receivers. They've got a man in motion. That's Raven, and... Instead, it will be a handoff up the middle. And he is going to get to the line of scrimmage. Maybe he got a yard out of it, and it'll be second and nine. Yeah, Fabian uh, and from his uh, backside linebacker position coming in there and, and getting a good wrap around uh, Valdez's legs. Second and nine. Wrestling him to the ground before he's able to get going. So just about ten seconds left here in this quarter, and that may well be the final play of the quarter, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, coach is calling his trips over to the sideline. He's... So that'll be the final play of our Raptor Peach Rucking first quarter. And we end the first here in the 66th Annual Battle of the Bell. All tied up at six between Cameron and Lockdale. This is the Battle of the Bell here on 105 on the Ranch. Hi, I'm Jason Donalek from Edco Development. For more than 25 years, you've been able to find Edco Development in the phone book. How many other companies are still listed along with us? Hmm. It's a good question. Check it out and see for yourself. So why take chances? Ebco Development has been there for you since 1984. Quality remodeling, new construction, roofing, and more. That's Ebco Development. Call us first at 254-697-2186. All right, welcome back as we are now starting. Second quarter here tonight in Rockdale. Our second quarter is brought to you by Barrel Bump Smokers for easy to use, customized smokers, locally owned and operated, and of course reasonably priced as well. You can visit them on Facebook or call 979 220 6147. Got a second and for the Tigers as we start this second quarter. They score all tied at six. And Rockdale now moving from right to left on the radio dial. Be interesting to see if they, you know, think about a pass here, you know, in the shadow of their own end zone. Corners backing off as it will be a handoff. And now Valdez looking for running room, but he is going to be brought down in the backfield. I tell you what, what an absolutely great tackle by uh, Landon Green from his outside linebacker position right there. Uh, not getting fooled uh, at all by, uh, or is it? Yeah, Landon Green, yeah. Not getting fooled by uh, Valdez's shifty moves there. So on a third down and long for the Tigers. Oh, 
been able to put uh, Rockdale in third and long several times tonight, but have had issues with that. This year, 11.22 on the clock and counting down. Here's the snap, and Mitchell looking to throw. Now steps up in the pocket, and he is going to be sacked. Nice job. I think that's Mondo Reyes there coming in from the back side, from the blind side right there on Mitchell. Uh, never really saw him and, and just able to track him down and get him down on the ground. So a sack, unable to elude that tackler, and Mitchell goes down. It ends up as a nine-yard loss, and that means the Tigers will have to punt on fourth and 20, and I believe the punter's going to be lined up in his own end zone. Yeah, big Anthony Bansbury, the big uh, number 10, the big six foot four inch wide receiver. He's got a lot of legs, so he can get 10 to one right here. It's liable to go away. Standing about the bottom of the eye in Tigers in the end zone. Ten and a half minutes to go as here comes the punt. The Elman come after it, and it's going to be a line drive, short punt. That's going to take a hop, and the Elman will let it go. It'll be stopped at the Tigers 40. Yeah, Gilsby did a good job of trying to get over there and field the ball, but it just, it, that line drive, and then it kind of took a sand wedge bounce. He really couldn't do anything with it. So the Elman will take over offensively with excellent field position. The first and 10, they actually marked this at the 39 of Rockdale. So first and 10 from the 39. Score remains tied at 6. Quick uh, score check in district. Brett, you got McGregor leading Academy 7 to 6 uh, at the start of the second quarter. And you've got um, Troy and Lorena 14 all with two and a half minutes to go in the first. Interesting score in that one. Twins off to the left side for Zyder. Got one man to the right, and Zyder hands the ball off, trying to find the right edge, and still steps up across the 40, and then he'll be collared at about the 42 yard, the 38 yard line, and a flag did come out. That's Pharrell Hemphill again, snuck into the backfield at the running back position. Uh, and I believe there's a horse collar at the end of that right there. To, uh, face mask. Oh, face mask, yeah. 15 yards I think it kind of was the same result, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it didn't matter which one it was, I guess. Uh, you get the same 15-yard uh, penalty and for automatic first down there. So uh, definitely puts us uh, right there in that uh, bling box red zone. Or at least or right outside, right outside guess, it, yeah, knocking on the door, so to speak. 10-17 on the clock. This game is tied at 6. Yeoman deep in Rockdale territory from the 23-yard line. Two receivers off to the left. Sider at a twin back set's going to hand it off. That is going to be a carry around the left side, trying to find his way around the tackle, but couldn't get there, and he ends up with maybe back to the line of scrimmage. They're doing, a, they're doing a good job of slow playing that on the outside corner right there. Uh, Keyshawn's getting out there and, and lead blocking, but uh, the, the, the defender is still really working outside, and so our, our back's having to cut it up, and their, their inside pursuit's able to get there then. So a second and nine. He did pick up one yard on the carry. That's two receivers to each side now for Zyder. On second and nine, looking to throw. Looks to his right, now being chased. Spins out of that. Now looking to his left and throws away and out of bounds. I believe he threw that one to Coach Marek uh, about four yards deep on the sideline. I'll give, I'll give Marek credit. He did catch it. Did he? I thought, he, I thought it bounced. I'm not sure. <laughs> Made a good attempt on it, though. Yeah. A, a for effort? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't imagine Coach Mark was a receiver back in his day, no, so you know, any, any effort is, is going to be an A in my book. There you go. 9.38 on the clock. Again, the score remains tied at 6 here in this ball game between Rockdale and Cameron. 66th annual Battle of the Bell. Here in this second quarter, brought to you by Barrel Bump Smokers. we got more to talk about them in a moment. Right now, Tripp's receivers off to the left side for Snyder. He's got nobody to the wide side, and he's looking to his left. Now being chased. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to let it fly out of bounds again. And a flag comes in here late. Uh, I'm thinking that's going to be a holding, yeah. Hold, initial call is holding against the Yeoman, play, just where it was, and what it looked like it was going on there. Number 77 of the offense, the penalty will be declined. So a holding penalty declined, and it brings up fourth down for the yard. So fourth and nine. I tell you, Brett, as hard as they're rushing up the middle right here, if we had some sort of uh, middle screen, I think it really might be a, a, a deadly call uh, for the yeoman right here. 9.31 on the clock after the incomplete pass and the penalty. Gelman have the football at their Rockdale Tigers 22-yard line. This game is tied at six here in the first half. Fourth down and nine, Gelman lining up to go for it. Twin receivers off the right and a two-back set. 
Snyder looking for the quick throw. And he's going to actually launch one towards the end zone. But that ball picked off at the five-yard line. Now Kishon Raven looking for running room. The five across the ten. It darts this way and that. Up down the sideline he goes. And he's got lots of running room. Finally, though, he'll be chased down and brought down across midfield to about the 45-yard line. Probably not the best decision by Zane there. Kind of going into some triple coverage right there. Um, Tough, tough play whenever you're throwing at that at, uh, the Ravens kid because uh, that kid is just really electric. So they actually got to see where they're going to mark this thing after he went out. He was down the sideline. They're actually going to put it right at midfield. So it'll be first and ten for the Tigers after the turnover from midfield. Again, this game remains tied at six, and now both teams with a turnover to their tally. Turn over each punt each, I believe. Uh, yeah, a fumble by Rockdale, interception by the Elvin. Now two receivers off to the right side for Mitchell, who hands off. That is Valdez, who skirts around the right side and finally comes down after a five-yard carry. They were trying to run that over the left side. They kind of had a, had a, a, a G play where they had a, a pulling guard over here, and uh, Eduardo Gill just kind of stuffed that, and Valdez definitely uh, spun out to his right and picked up a nice couple few yards there. Ten and nine minutes to go here in the barrel bump smokers second quarter. And two receivers off to that right side for Mitchell. Valdez in the backfield. And he will get the football. He is going to jump around the right side. Ducks under one tackle. And then he's going to have a nice seven-yard carry as he gets across the 40 to the 38. Young man showing why he's being uh, recruited so heavily right there. He, he made a couple of and just flat out whiff. Uh, and so, uh, tough, tough player right there. First and 10 now for the Tigers from the 38-yard line. Lock inside, eight and a half to go. Still tied at six. And again, it's Valdez getting his number called. He's going to spin right into a couple of tackles, though, and he'll go down. Gill just annihilated his man right there. It kind of blew up the play at the start, and then Barbo and Green just came in and totally finished the Valdez off. No gain on that carry. Second and ten for the Tigers here. Coming up on just about eight minutes to go until halftime. The second quarter brought to you by Barrel Bump Smokers. Check them out on Facebook. Excellent, ugly drum style smokers. Good stuff, super easy to use. And here's a high snap, gets by Mitchell. Ball still on the ground, finally picks it up, and he is going to be breaking through the first sacker. Now he's just going to let one go down the middle of the field. That ball is going to be caught by a Rocktail Tiger at about the 28-yard line. Two men went up for it, and somehow one came down with it. I believe that was Yahir Botello. Wow, Brett, that's just absolutely unbelievable. That's the that's the, the the benefit of having a young man that's such a stellar athlete like the Mitchell kid in the backfield. I mean, he's dribbling that ball around in the backfield like a basketball. Uh, we've got him dead to rights for about a 15-yard loss, and he just flings it out there uh, to another athlete that comes down with it. What a play. And so a huge completion brings up third and two. They will hand it here to Valdez. He's got a lead blocker. He's going to follow him. Dances around across the 20, the 10, 5, and dives into the end zone. Did he get it? He did. Touchdown, Tigers. Really good job by the Valdez kid right there of following his blocker. You know, we've, we've watched this kid on the varsity for several years now, and I tell you, he's done a better job tonight of following his blockers and using his block instead of just trying to have to rely on his own ability than I've ever seen it. Now we'll see what the Tigers decide to do here. After the touchdown, makes it 12-6. to They're going to try for the extra point. That's what they're lining up for. Had the last one blocked. There's the snap. The Elman come through, but they do sneak this one through. 13-6 to is the score here in Rockdale as the Tigers leading here the 66th Annual Battle of the Bell. You're listening to your football on 105 on the Ranch. Heating and air conditioning. We all expect it to work. When it doesn't, don't call any heating and AC company. Call Temple Heat and Air, your full-service AC and heating company. 254-771-1012. Locally owned and operated since 2001, you'll see the difference in their personalized, safe, and friendly service. As an American Standard and Lennox dealer, you'll get the right parts and service for the right system. Get same-day service and no surprises, plus great financing and discounts. When your system isn't working, call Temple Heat and Air, 254-771-1012. Here on the Barrel Bump Smokers second quarter, the Tigers 
with a nice 22-yard run by the stud running back for the Tigers, Kent Ron Valdez. He takes it in and gives the Tigers a lead again here in the Battle of the Bell. 13-6 is the score over the Cameron Yeoman now. 7-1 on the clock. Tigers will be kicking away. The Yeoman looking for an answer. Send up for the angle kick again here. By the way, let's talk for a moment about barrel bump smokers. Uh, if you're not following them on Facebook, it's a fun follow. And also recently posted about a very special uh, Cameron Yo smoker, which is very... Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a sharp looking smoker, Brett. Man, I've never seen anything like those smokers before, but that, the, the Cameron Yeoman one that he's put together is just a really, really sharp looking uh, uh, smoker. I mean, I don't know what else you call it, but it, 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 it's pretty awesome looking. Yeah, it's an angle kick, fielded at the 25 yard line, brings it all up the way up across the 40 to 42, does Hemphill, and a nice return. It'll give the open a good starting field position. Yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that starting field position right there. You know, uh, Rockdale, uh, they, they feel good about what they did right there. But, you know, in, in essence, I mean, they gave us the ball, you know, less than 60 yards away from pay dirt. So, the you know, offense will go to work. 6.50 on the clock before halftime. Yelling it. Throw the interception down near the red zone last time. And now looking with three receivers out to the right side. And will be a handoff of Bynum having to retreat. He's going back towards the 30-yard line, and he goes down. That is a huge loss. Yeah, they, they had the box stacked against us right there, and we had the handoff play, you know. And uh, Fabian, he probably would have been better off just, you know, lunging forward and, and, you know, getting a small loss instead of a, the big loss that he ended up uh, by trying to make a play. You, you, you hate to, you know, get down on the kid by trying to make a play there, but uh, probably not the best decision there. So second and about uh, Cameron for the open here. It's, uh, it's actually second and 22, and lots of jumping here as flags come in and stop this play. And, uh, man, Brett, you know, they are jumping across the line of scrimmage there, and which, which caused our offensive lineman to jump. To me, that's a... Uh, a play where I feel like we were induced. Um, I, I think the officials got that wrong. Well, it backs the Elvin up five more yards, and it'll be second and 27, so it's now second and buckles. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of plays in the playbook for that. Three receivers off to the right side, and Seidert's looking to throw. They're trying to set up the screen. That ball's nowhere close to the intended receiver. They, like, split the two. Yeah, and I tell you, the, we're lucky that the uh, the free safety that was coming in on the play that he he never looked in the backfield because if he did, uh, he could have easily intercepted that ball. So third down at twenty seven. Number thirty four of the defense. Five yard penalty remains second down. I did not see that flag come in, but a penalty has been called, and that is an offside against the Tigers. That'll give Thielman a little reprieve. And I, they can almost call that just about every play because they are coming so hard up the middle right now. Again, you know, I don't know if it's a play we have in the playbook or not, but I would love to see a, maybe a middle screen of some sort. So we're back to second and 20, 22 after the five-yard offsides penalty. 6-0-1 on the clock. Tigers are leading here in the first half. 13-6 over the Omen. Cameron with the football, two receivers to the right side, and a twin back set. And Seidert's looking to throw, lets it go as he's under pressure. That ball nearly picked off and was in and out of the hands of the defender. A little wheel route by uh, Bynum, who had you know, lined up in the backfield that time, kind of tried to wheel him out and see if he could catch him. They you were know, sleeping there or, or stunting and, and not having enough guys to cover him there, but they still had one guy left out there and was able to knock the ball away before Pharrell was able to get to it. So it'll be third down and 22 now for the Oak from their own 31-yard line. Line to gain is the Tigers 48, 47. Be interesting to see if Rockdale brings the heat again on this play, which they're lining up like they are. They so. are doing that. Flint receivers to each side. Zider is looking to throw. Now steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to take off running up across the 30. There's the 40. Back to the price. The line of scrimmage. The 45. And up near midfield, but just shy of that. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, good, nice gain by Zane right there. Uh, but just not going to be enough at this point in, in the ball game and in, in this placing in the field to go for it on fourth down here. So fourth and six. Fourth and six. And it's 
inside of five and a half minutes before halftime. Yeoman trailing 13 to six here in the Battle of the Bell. At flags. Coming in here, that's probably against Cameron. Yeah, illegal substitution. We had too many men on the field there. The penalty against the other will back them up further. Elwood trailing here in this ball game, 13 to six. It has been an exciting first half so far. Well, the Elwood have stalled out here. Now fourth and 11 is Cameron will be punting. One man way back around the 20-yard line, and this is going to be a good punt. That's going to be fielded at the 20. It loses the first tackler. Now up across the 30, ducks out. Of Finally goes down at the 32. Nice job by Barbo and Sanchez of peeling back and coming back and catching him from behind right there. Uh, the punt was a good punt. Maybe would have liked to have a little more height on it right there uh, to limit the young man from being able to get as many yards on the return. So it'll be first and 10 now for the Tigers. They'll have it at their own 32-yard line. 4.56 is on the clock here at Tiger Stadium. That's up until we get to halftime. Leeds McGregor, 13-7. You know, something you had in, in the pregame notes, Brett, we didn't get to, but, you know, they've got a lot of speed on the field. You know, usually the Yeoman can run away from people, but that's not going to be the case tonight. No, it will not. And we've seen that a couple of times here tonight as another handoff here for Valdez. Ducks out of one, then steps another and picks up a couple of hard, tough fighting yards. Barbara with the initial contact three, in the backfield right there, but came up with a little bit of a limp uh, after the play, so hopefully he's able to shake that off and remain in the ball game here. Time to the short game. Second and seven coming up here for Rockdale. Inside of four and a half minutes to go before halftime. It's going to be a two-back set this time. Surrounding Mitchell, two receivers off to his left. And he hands it off to Raven coming around the left side. And he will be up near the 40-yard line and just a couple of yards short of the first down. And Mondo Reyes shot the and had a chance to nail Ravens for zero gain, uh, maybe even a loss right there, but uh, just wasn't able to hang on to him. Tigers leading third six with four minutes to go before halftime. Here the battle of the bell. Third down and two here for Rockdale. And then off to the Valdez in the backfield. Takes the handoff. Actually, quarterback pulled it, and he's going to take off around the left side. Hurdles one man that gets hit hard and is hit out of bounds. Really, really excellent ball work by Mitchell there. Uh, put it in the running back's gut and really just rode it in there for a long time. And, you know, that, that's really tough if you can slow play that play like that on, on the offensive side of the ball. Against the Tigers, the first down on the Yo side of the field. It'll be at the Yo 48 yard line, first and 10. You've got two receivers off to the right, bunched close together. One man alone here to the left. And Mitchell, this time, does give the ball to Valdez. Tries to spin out of this tackle, but not let it go of his ankle, and it does go down. I tell you, Landon Green, uh, Brett, for a, a, a sophomore, is really playing above his uh, age and classification on the defensive side of the ball for the for the Yeoman this year. Um, lots and lots of solo tackles, and you don't normally see that out of sophomores. Coming up on just about three minutes to go before halftime. Tigers out in front, 13 to six, and with the football, two receivers to each side. As Mitchell's looking to throw, now steps up, now scrambling around to the right, up across midfield. There's the 45, and then goes out of bounds. Yeah, Flores. Uh, I think they were they they had a, a, a quick screen uh, called to Ravens out here, and Green read it before the play and ran out to Ravens and pretty much got in his face at the line of scrimmage on, before the snap. And so Mitchell kind of just took off around the right side, and uh, Flores came up from his safety position and ran him out of bounds. So 257 is all that's left here in this first half. Yelman trailing 13 to six. It's a third down and five for the Tigers. From the old 42 yard line. Twin receivers off to the right side as the Yelman jump here. Flags. Or inch the Tigers closer to a first down. It's going to be close, but I would say that's probably going to be a first down. Yeah, 
Hey, Brett, I know it has absolutely nothing to do with the game tonight, but looking off in the distance, the moon, the full moon tonight is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, very. I guess you'd call that a red har what is that, red harvest moon? Strawberry moon? I don't know, it's red. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like a big orange pumpkin. It kind of does. <laughs> Welcome to Hall Halloween, October, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that uh, penalty did give the Tigers a first down, so first and ten from the 38 of the Yeoman. Clock remains at 2.57, and the Tigers out in front with two receivers to the left side for Mitchell. Got to keep this one up. The middle he goes, and he is still on his feet with a huge gain. Picked up uh, about eight. I tell you, that man is... He, he might not be a Division One quarterback, Brad, because he hadn't played the position before this year, but he's a Division One talent. Pick up of eight. Just a junior. Second and two. Inside of two and a half minutes to go before halftime. And the Tigers out in front, 13 to 6 in this one. Facing second and short. Mitchell hands it off to Baldez, who started left, goes right, down the sideline, and then goes out of bounds through the 20. Valdez looks really shifty tonight. Uh, I, I'll say this, in the, the three years that we've watched him play against the Yeoman, this is probably the best I've seen him look. Uh, did give the Tigers a first down. They'll have it inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. So first and 10 for Rockdale. Deep in your territory here. Two minutes, 17 seconds on the clock after Valdez ran out of bounds to get the first down. Raven in motion. Now lines up as a tailback. Will not get the football. Valdez does. He is through the middle. Spins out of a couple of tackles after breaking through the first line of defense. And then goes down after about a seven-yard okay, game. Valdez, I'm trying to see who that is. young man is that made the tackle there. I think that's uh, 36, Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson uh, in on the tackle. Tigers have it. Inside of two minutes to go before halftime. From the 12-yard line. Yeoman really need to stiffen up their necks and bow their backs a little bit here and try to keep the Tigers out of the end zone. It's second and short. A first down would give Rockdale a first and goal. And guess who? Valdez turns his back and just sort of wills his way forward but only picks up about a yard. Yeah, big Eduardo Gill kind of caught him from behind right there, keeping him from getting the first down. Number 76, Eduardo Gill. So a third and one now for the Tigers. Tigers have the ball third and two. Clock still ticking. We're going to come up on just about a minute left here in the half. Well, it should snap this with right on a minute, and it will be a keeper by the quarterback. He spins through, hops over one man, and then he finally goes down, but should be enough right at the first down marker at the nine. And it is and up for a first down. It's really tough to defend that zone read right there with Valdez running the ball as well as he is right now. And there's been a timeout taken, it looks like. Another Rockville Tiger, first down. And so, with a timeout here, we will take one with them. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Tigers leading the Elman here in Rockdale. At Standards Home Health, they believe that you deserve compassionate, honest, and reliable care from only the finest health care professionals. Call the professionals at Standards Home Health to find out more about home health services. You have a choice when it comes to choosing a home health provider. Choose the provider that has raised the standards in home health care across the state of Texas. Standards Home Health and Hospice. 1-888-671-7007. one 671 7007 Wow. Back here at Tiger Stadium, just 56 seconds to go here in the first half. Right now, the Rockdale Tigers leading in this ballgame, 13 to 6, and deep in your territory, first and goal from the eight yard line. So on first and goal after the timeout. Tigers have the ball, first and goal from the eight. Tigers with a empty backfield now as Valdez lines up as a wideout. Now coming across the formation in motion. And they're going to hand off to Raven around the left side. Hurls into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. 
They faked the jet sweep to Valdez and gave it to basically it was a jet sweep. It was a little quick forward pitch. I guess it goes down as probably a, a pass, a forward pass. Uh, but basically it's a jet sweep to Ravens around the left end. Uh, and again, young man is just such a good athlete. It's difficult to defend. So the Tigers extend the lead 19 to 6 and 5 now for an extra point. Make it a 20 to 6 ball game if they can make it through. There's the snap. It was a little bit off. The kick, though, is going to be good. It's 20 to 6 is the new score here in Rockdale. 49 seconds left in the half. The Omen on their heels here in the first half of this one against Rockdale in the Battle of the Bell. This is your football on Little Five on the Ranch. You know the problem. More stuff than storage. Gold Star Structures has you covered. Gold Star Structures skilled craftsmen have been building top-notch sheds since 1997. Design your own with their brand new shed builder at LoneStarStructures.com or browse their available inventory for quick delivery. Lone Star Structures, Midway Drive Exit in Temple or Highway 77 in Rosebud Lot. Call 800-551-4807. Lone Star Structures. Buy local. Buy from folks you trust. Welcome back here in Rockdale. The Oldman, though, right now is staring at a deficit 20 to 6 here in the 66th annual Battle of the Bell. 49 seconds before halftime. And the Oldman going to have to regroup here in the second half of this ballgame. They had a hot start, but things kind of have stalled here in the second quarter. And was really used up a lot of clock uh, here in this second quarter, too, like, especially with this last drive. You know, they they didn't necessarily have to go the length of the field because the interception return was so good, but they ate up a lot of clock there, the Tigers, um, keeping the Yeoman offense off the field. Back deep. So the Tigers will be kicking here. Again, just 49 seconds left to go here in this Barrel Bump Smokers second quarter. Been standing around the 20, deep for the Omen, but this will be a short kick. Fielded it around the 31 yard line. Now they brought up field up across the 40. Got one blocker, make that two up across midfield. The 45, the 40. There's the 25, the 30, the 20. Got a stiff arm to go inside the 10, and he goes down. Brought down by the kicker. Great kickoff return by Fabian Bynum right there. I tell you, he got in behind a, a blocker and just used him to. to to make a little bit of space for himself up the sideline and then kind of weaved his way a little bit long, further. And, you know, Brett, I, I thought there was a chance he might take it all the way right there. Well, that is a shot in the arm that the Yeoman have needed here in this first half, trailing 20-6 to six and trying to find some kind of momentum. It would be nice to put the put some points on the board here before halftime as the other will get the football. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's the thing. is If we can get in and score a touchdown here, and, and then we know we get the ball back to start the second half. we got a chance, you know, to, to tie the ball game up or take the lead right there. 37 seconds to go before halftime, and it is going to be first and goal from the nine-yard line. Rockdale's going to take a timeout right here. Rockdale takes the timeout. We'll take one with them. You're listening to Yo Football on 105 on the Ranch. It's your home away from home. The Budget Host Inn and Suites. Cable TV with flat screen LCD HD TV in each room. Guest laundry, fitness center, and pool. The Southern Hospitality at Budget Host Inn and Suites shows through. They can accommodate your next business meeting in their meeting room and business center. Romantic getaway? Book a jacuzzi suite. So if it's a business trip, romantic getaway, or you just need a place to stay for the night, the Budget Host Inn and Suites in Cameron has a room for you. 102 Lafferty Avenue. Call 254-605-0610. Budget Host Cameron.com. Out of a timeout, 37 seconds to go here in this first half. The Omen trailing 20 to 6 here in the Battle of the Bell. Bought the Omen after an excellent kickoff return by Fabian Bynum. Have the football at the Tigers 9. First and goal. A twin receivers to each side here for Zyner. One man is in the backfield. Zyner looking to throw, lets it go under pressure, that's into the middle of the end zone, incomplete. Yeah, he had to get rid of that one under pressure there. I think uh, Sanchez was trying to get to the middle of the field and just didn't have enough time to get there. So 32 seconds to go, and a second and goal from the nine coming up. The Oman have had issues with blocking really since the start of the second quarter. Yeah, we hadn't protected real well. Uh, see big Eduardo Gill checking in on the offensive line here, provide a little extra support and extra uh, protection for Zane in the backfield. On second and goal. 
Again with twin receivers to each side. And Johnson at the tailback spot moves over to the right, and he is going to take this football and go inside the 10-yard line before he is stood up. Good to have the ball right around. It looks like more like about where they started from the night. I thought he got a little yeah. further ahead than that, but no. Yeah, you want to take another timeout here. And they'll face a third down and goal. They did get pick up one yard from the eight-yard line. Had a little bit of a hold there, but I tell you, it closed down awful quick, Brett. That Rockdale defense is really quick, really fast. Just 23 seconds to go before halftime. Of course, we do have Intermedia halftime report coming up. Also do our best to try to get the Yoban performance in as well. Of course, it's just half the Yoban yeah. again tonight uh, with the COVID restrictions and limiting the bands to half travel uh, groups. So uh, it's just half the band tonight. So I, they may not actually perform their show. It just may be a, a performance. Well, you've got 23 seconds here. This is a critical third down if you're the Cameron Yo offense right now. Yeah, it would be really nice to, to get into the end zone and get a six uh, on the board here. From the far hash mark, twin receivers to each side. Designer from the shotgun. Takes a snap, looking to throw. Quick throw, out, and incomplete. And pressured again there, Brett. Just, uh, that, that Rockdale front is really giving the Yeoman trouble. So a fourth down coming up for the O offense here. It looks like the field goal unit is going to come on here. Yeah, we're just going to try to put some points on the board. Here before the half, 19 seconds is all that's left. There's the hole, the kick, that is up, and is good. So the field goal is good. 20-9 to nine is the new score with 19 seconds to go before halftime. You're listening to the 66th Annual Battle of the Bell here on 105 on the Ranch. being behind the wheel of a Ram 3500 with a 1,000 pounds per foot of torque. Power is a 12-inch touchscreen and 395 horsepower Hemi V8. Ram Power Days are going on now at Cameron Autoplex in Cameron, Texas. If you count on your truck, then you count on Cameron Autoplex to deliver the right truck for you. We have the selection and the pricing our customers deserve. We are your Central Texas Truck Authority. Shop in person or online at CameronAutoplex.com. And remember, it's always cheaper in Cameron. Because we have just 19 seconds before halftime. 20 to 9 is the new score. Let's get to the Don's Paint and Body scoring drive. Four plays, one yard is all it was. It ends up at a field goal. That's your Don's Paint Body scoring drive. That's Don's Paint Body on West 4th across from Brookshire Brothers in Cameron. Call 697 2011. That's for Don's Paint and Body. They got 20 to 9 is the score. It's an 11 point game. The Tigers are out in front. Just 19 seconds left before halftime. And the Yeoman will have to kick here. Although Cameron will get the ball to start the second half. Yellen will have some things to talk about in the locker room. We'll discuss that as part of our Comedia Halftime Report, which is coming up. Right now, though, Cameron getting ready to kick off. And you got to be careful here. So you don't erase any momentum you just put together. It will be a deep kick, and that's going to be fielded by Raven from the 20-yard line. Now looking for some running room around this near side sideline. Does a dance across the 30 and still on his feet. And nearly had the ball pulled out, but instead goes down. And he will go down. Yeah, Iverson Brazil almost ripped the ball out right there. <laughs> would have been interesting to see if he could have. You know, we could have taken a couple shots at the end zone, maybe. Well, it leaves 10 seconds on the clock. The Tigers have a chance to run a play, maybe two. Well, you have halftime entertainment from the Yo Band, the Big Blue Band from Rockdale, and the Golden Girls from So on first and ten for the Tigers. Following those performances, make sure you stop by Just the ten seconds to go. The FFA will run the concession stands this evening. Rockdale comes out in a tight formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now he's widening out. And flags come out. I thought Rockdale called a timeout there. Uh, looked like number 13 was signaling timeout. I'm not sure. Before the flag, timeout, Rockdale. 
So they they found a timeout of the half. They did manage to get a timeout in there instead of the flag. That flag will be wiped, and so that is the final timeout by the Tigers here. Ten seconds is all that's left, and this is a dangerous spot if you are the O defense because you got to keep momentum that you what momentum you get you gained here in the second late in this set first half. Yeah, definitely. You don't don't want to let them, you know, break anything loose right here with 10 seconds to go. You know, and you want to get in a prevent type defense here. You know, just tackle them inbounds somewhere. Uh, get out of this half and go in locker room, regroup, talk about what we need to adjust and, and come out and, and take care of this thing in the second half. Just 10 seconds is all that separates these two teams from halftime. It is first and 10 here for the Tigers from their own 37-yard line. Rockdale comes out, two receivers on the near hash. On the near side anyway, the short side of the field. And it will be a handoff and try to make the tackle in the backfield, but scrambling around on his uh, hands and almost hands and knees almost with Paul Dez. And that will be the final play here in the first half. The Tigers will go into the locker room leading the Cameron Yeoman here. 20 to 9 here at Tiger Stadium at Rockdale, the 66th annual Battle of the Bell. So we're going to join the Germania halftime report next. <laughs> is the Germania Insurance Halftime Report, live from the stadium, brought to you by Lisa Roden, your Germania Insurance agent in Cameron. Welcome into tonight's Halftime Report, which is brought to you by Lisa Roden, your Germania Insurance agent. And right now, the Omen trailing in this game at the half, 20-9. Uh, it was an explosive start for both teams in that first quarter, but uh, the Omen really bogged down in the second quarter, and uh, Rockdale took advantage. Yeah, we, we had some trouble blocking their front, uh, their defensive front in that second quarter right there. They're, they're stunting hard up the middle, uh, bringing a lot of guys. Really, they're bringing more... Uh, guys defensively than we have in there to block so uh we're having to you know get rid of the ball earlier than we want to we're hard to get going with any any running plays in the middle there and uh they pursue you know they're so athletic just like we are that they pursue well to the corner to the edge and so it's really been difficult for us to get anything going uh the yo defense you know i feel like they've done a really good job for the most part on first down we've got had them in second and long a lot uh but it's been this you know second and third down we haven't played as well as we have on first down so uh they've been able to you know keep the ball and control the clock and that kind of stuff and and uh we're just we're gonna have to do a better job with some of those things in the second half yeah you you look at this um really the tailback cameron valdez has been as advertised in fact you, you even mentioned it in the first half this is probably the best that we've seen him in three years yeah definitely you know i, I you know, he, he's been highly touted uh, for three years now. You know, as a sophomore, he was getting, you know, I don't know if he's necessarily getting offers, but he was getting looks by, you know, some major Division One programs like the Michigan Wolverines, you know, uh, guys that you see, you know, Big Ten, they're on, on TV, uh, primetime TV every Saturday. Uh, so, you know, he's a very talented young man, uh, but he really hadn't, I, I didn't, I haven't felt like he's really broken loose uh, on us in the last couple of years, but uh, tonight he's looked like he, he kind of had a, a little bit of a different gear and a little bit more elusiveness to his running style. Well, it looks like we are going to see the Yo High School band here as part of the halftime festivities. They will take the field first. We'll, of course, bring you that performance. Yeah, and they're they're in uniform tonight, which is great to see. Uh, and uh, but again, it, it's just half the band, and so uh, it's a much smaller contingent than Yo fans are used to seeing. And and because it is only half of the band, it, it's kind of hard to run your show whenever you're missing every other person. So uh, it'll just be a, a block formation with a, a presentation of some music tonight versus a, a traditional Yo band show. Well, your Yo band performance tonight. The award-winning Yo High School Band performance presented here on the Germania Halftime Show by Ideal Poultry at Cameron, always a big supporter of Yo Band Athletics and Academics. Happy to have them as a sponsor of the Yo High School Band, and of course, happy to have the band on board here as part of the halftime performance. The Omen again trailing here in the 66th Annual Battle of the Bells. The band takes the field here.
There you go. That is the award-winning Yale High School band, or at least part of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I counted 64 members out there on the field, so uh, you can figure, you know, that gives us about 120-something uh, probably because there's there may be one or two of those guys that uh, travel every week or something, you know, but it uh, sounded absolutely great out there, and uh, I just wish we could see the whole whole group here tonight, but unfortunately we can't right now, so we have to had to wait till we get back to home so we can see the whole band. Uh, the whole the whole Rockdale band is coming out onto the field now. They're not quite as big, I don't believe, as our half. Yeah. Uh, by the way, again, that band performance brought to you by Ideal Poultry and Cameron, a big supporter of your band, athletics and academics. All right, let's take our first break here in the Germania Halftime Report. We'll come back in a moment. We'll get some stats from Josh Pratt. We'll also uh, keep talking about what we saw here in the first half and what to expect in the second. This is Yo Football on 105 on the Ranch. It's a trust. As true as Texas, a friend with a helping hand. When you want to ensure the good things in life, trust Germania. Is your insurance company taking too big a bite out of your apple? When you're shopping for property insurance, think about coverage, service, and price. Make sure you're getting the most for your money. When you compare apples to apples, you'll see that Germania Insurance delivers outstanding value. Competitive rates, flexible payment options, and discounts. Plus, Germania offers 24-7 customer claim service. Trusted by Texans since 1896. Don't give up service or sacrifice coverage. Compare apples to apples. Then choose the outstanding value offered by Germania Insurance. So when you want to insure the good things in life, trust Germania. Call 697-4683 for Sharon Ruback, representative of Ruback Insurance and Germania Farm Mutual Companies. Halftime report as we work our way through halftime here tonight. Uh, right now, though, uh, Yeoman having some struggles in the first half. Uh, again, a, a fast start by both teams with each uh, touchdown in that first quarter. But uh, Yeoman kind of stalled out after that. And of course, uh, Rockdale and, and uh, Cameron Paul Dez, who really kind of established himself and found some momentum and some things that have worked. Yeah, uh, the Valdez kid looks really good. And then, of course, the other thing about Rockdale, whenever we kind of get him bottled up every now and then, uh, the Miller kid just pulls it and uses his unbelievable athleticism back there in the backfield as well to, to either keep the play alive or, or to rush the ball himself. And, and he is he's an electrifying player as well. Yeah, Kobe Mitchell, the quarterback who has taken over since Chase Robinson got hurt, is 
Uh, from what we've seen, he, he's been a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, he just his athleticism allows him to continue to extend plays uh, that, you know, kids that you see normally a quarterback just can't do. Uh, he's, I mean, you know, I, got, I think I said it earlier, he's a Division One athlete. Uh, he's probably not going to play a quarterback uh, at the next level, but I'd very, be very surprised to see that young man not playing somewhere on the field uh, in Division One football in a couple years. Yeah, I mean, and he's still got another year. Just a junior is, is the quarterback. And uh, you, you look at him, the elusiveness. I mean, you saw what, you saw what was a Johnny Manziel play in the first half. Yeah, that, that's a, absolutely a great description of it, Brett. I know uh, you turned to me, I think, we, maybe we were off the air when you said something about a Johnny Manziel play. And that's exactly what it was. I mean, they snapped the ball over his he bounces it a couple times, dribbles it like a basketball, and weaves around, you know, turns and spins a couple times and just and the flings it, <laughs> flings it up, and then they got their version of Mike Evans that goes up and, yeah. and brings it down for a first down right there, you know. A play that should have been a huge loss for them ends up being a, a first down play. Yeah, and directly leads to a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's, I tell you what, let's bring uh, Josh Proud aboard and, and get some stats here uh, from the first half. Our halftime stats with Josh brought to you by Anarchy Cattle Company in Burlington. Take it away, buddy. All right, we'll start with the Yeoman here. Uh, six first downs in that first half and just 90 total yards. Um, through the air, Zane Zinert is 5 of 12 for 53 yards, no touchdowns, and one interception. Um, receiving, Jaden Sanchez, two catches for 28 yards. Zachorian Spikes, two catches for 21 yards. Yards. On the ground, the Omen have rushed the ball 11 times for just 37 yards. Zane Zinert, three carries for 19 yards. Pharrell Hemfield, three carries for nine yards. Sikorian Spikes, one for five. And Fabian Bynum, four for four. For the Tigers, nine first downs in the first half. Kobe Mitchell is four of six through the air with one touchdown and 56 yards. Anthony Dansby, two catches for 40 yards. Keyshawn Raven, one catch for eight yards and a touchdown. And on the ground, the Tigers have rushed the ball 27 times for 142 yards. They did lose one fumble. Kimron Valdez, 18 carries, 117 yards and two scores. Kobe Mitchell, six carries, 23 yards. And Keyshawn Raven, two carries for 11 yards. All right, uh, thanks, Matt. That is uh, your halftime stats with uh, Josh Pratt. That's brought Ladies to you by Anarch Cattle Carolina Company ISD, over Rockdale in Burlington. And, uh, the big number that stands out, lady. first of all, is uh, less than 100 yards of total offense in the first half. That is very unknown, Mike. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's just after that first uh, drive, really, we, we've, like I said, you know, we've been very uh, limited in what we've been able to do offensively. You know, the, the, the next biggest offensive series for us was when we ended up with a field goal there at the with a half, and it was because of Fabian Bynum's huge um, kickoff return, you know. Uh, he, he, which stalled out. Yeah, yeah, which stalled out. You know, he got, we got about 60 yards on the kickoff return, and then, you know, unfortunately only ended up with a three uh, out of it there. So, yeah, you know, we're definitely going to have to go out and go in and, and make some adjustments uh, to the, the pressure that they're bringing up the front. Um, it, you know, it's disrupting our running game, and, and it, it's causing Zane uh, to have to release the ball before he wants to on some of our timing patterns. And so we definitely have some adjustments to be made. Yeah, it, it, it's got to start up front with the with the offensive line. Zinert five of twelve, uh, but it feels like really since that first series he's been under duress every time he's he's had the football. Yeah, and that's I'm not exactly sure, but. Uh, it feels like almost maybe that all five of those completions may have came on that first drive. I don't remember. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's kind of been running for his life back there uh, because some penetration that's coming just right up the middle. Um, and, and it's not because our guys aren't doing a good job up front. They're really it's, they're, they're doing a decent job. It's just they're bringing more guys than we have to block. Uh, and so we may have to, you know, keep another keep a tight end in there, keep, you know, get another running back in there and kind of go max protect or something like that. Uh, you know, something to come about what they're doing uh, to make Zane so uncomfortable back there. Yeah, you got to figure something out with that. Uh, defensively, it's hard to be upset with what you've seen. Yeah, uh, you know, we we haven't played bad defensively. I know we gave up 20 points, um, but, you know... <laughs> With as electrifying as they are, that really isn't that bad. Um, and, and you know, we've played really well. I feel like, on, like I said it earlier, we've we played really well on first down, and we've had them second and long uh, a, a lot. 
At third uh, and long. Yeah, and, and some third and long. It's, it's just been when we've got them, whatever, some, uh, down and long, other than first down and long, yeah. um, we haven't been able to, to get back there and hang on to the, to the you know, the quarterback or, or you know, continue the, the pressure, you know, because – the young man is so stinking elusive back there. Uh, it's so electric. It's just it's hard to get him and, and get a hand on him and, and get him on the ground. Keys to the second half. Um, I think, you know, number one is going to be we're going to have to figure out some kind of way to block them up front uh, and, and protect, you know, uh, w- whether it's run block uh, up front or protect in the pass uh, up front. You know, so we're going to have to make some adjustments there. Um, and then, you know, when we do stop them on, you know, first down like we've done quite a bit and get them into, you know, second long or third and long, we're going to have to apply some pressure right there uh, and, and – and, Get some, get get some, you know, some get out, get out of some uh, uh, some defensive series there, you know, quickly, uh, not chew up the clock like they've been able to do, you know, methodically going down the field. The Oldman have felt like they lost momentum up until that kickoff return near the la- in the last minute. Um, however. You put points on the board in half. You're getting the football here to start the second half. Yeah, and so you know it, it's it's a I think it's a real key for us to go out right here to start the second half and and put on the board and, and tighten this gap a little bit. Uh, and and then you know defense is going to have to stiffen up and, and and shut them down again so we can you know continue to score uh, if, if we're going to have a chance to to win this ball game. Yeah, I I really feel like you've got establish yourself here at the start of the second half if you want to get back in this game because Rockdale we, you know, is, as you mentioned it, it, uh, one of the things that we didn't get to in the pregame was that Cameron is, it, it, has been known for years to have speed Rockdale though is, is one of the few teams that can match up speed for speed with with Cameron and uh, I feel like we've, we've kind of seen that tonight and if, if, if Cameron is going to continue you know, to keep the bell here tonight they're going to have to find something that works because Rockdale speed too to keep doing what they're doing yeah they've got plenty of speed over here you know i think it was the, the year before i can't remember if it was a year before they won the state football title or the year before that i think if i'm not mistaken i think they won a state track championship uh so you know there's definitely speed here in rockdale uh, you know it, 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 it the speed didn't die at the river uh yeah, there, there's <laughs> there's plenty on this side of well, and yeah. so uh, we can't just rely on our speed tonight. We're going to have to, you know, go out and do a better job of executing in the second half than we've done in the first. Tell you what, let's take our second break. We'll come back. We'll continue talking about this first half, what we'll see out of the second. And uh, we're going to get to some scores, too. Yeah, there's, there's, some, interesting. there's some interesting ones out there tonight. All right, we're back in just a moment. This is the Jamania Halftime Report. It's a trust as true as Texas. A friend with a helping hand. The good things in life. Trust Germania. Are you comparing apples to apples on your insurance coverage? Apples to apples? Yeah, like making sure you have a great rate and outstanding coverage. My company says they have the lowest rates, but I'm not sure about coverage. How about service? When you're shopping for property insurance, do you compare coverage, service, and price to make sure you're getting the most for your money? I never thought to ask. Well, Germania Insurance has been insuring Texans for over 100 years. Hmm, I do need to do some comparing. Just make sure you're comparing apples to apples with the right coverage and outstanding rates for property auto and your family so when you want to ensure the good things in life trust your mania call 697-4683 for sharon ruback representative of ruback insurance and germania for mutual companies thank you all and germania halftime report just about 10 minutes or so to our second half kick and then the second half Hopefully we'll see some fireworks. The offense again started strong, but uh, kind of stalled out in that second quarter. And uh, meanwhile, Rockville Tigers have opened up a 20 to nine lead here in the first half. And as we head in the second half, uh, what, what, the biggest thing you got to do is you got to get the ball and you play like his hands, and you got to find a way to keep Zane Zinard off his back. Yeah, we got to keep Zane off his back, and we got to get Fabian going too. You know, I think what did Josh say? He has like four yards and four carries at the half. You know. Um, Fabian, you know, as he showed on that kickoff return, you know, he is an electrifying runner. Um, and so, you know, we've got to be able to get him, uh, you know, out in space uh, with some one-on-ones as well. Sports. 
So let's get to some score. You ready to go? Yeah, sure. A uh, couple of scores of note uh, in our district. Um, you got Lorena over Troy at the half, 28 to 20. You know, Troy, a team that was in the regional championship against uh, uh, Grandview last year, who won the state championship. So, uh, and and Troy's got the Herbachik kid at running back, um, who is, I believe, right now going into the ball game tonight. I think I saw he is the third leading rusher in the nation. Uh, yeah, the nation. That's all 50 states. Now, I know all, all 50 of them are playing football right now, but that's a lot of running backs. And you talk about the whole United States, and he's the third leading rusher. Yeah. Uh, number one in Texas. Um, and then also in our district, you got Academy leading McGregor 1914 at the half. Um, and, you know, McGregor totally demolished um, Rockdale last week. And so, um, you know, the very interesting scores there. Um, you got Franklin, who we played. A couple of weeks ago, um, leading Riesel 42 21 um, at the half. Um, I think they were down uh, in that ball game early, if I'm not mistaken, though. Um, right down the road from us uh, in Cameron, you've got Rosebud Lott um, trailing Hearn 41 uh, 0 at the half. I know Rosebud Lott's much better this year, uh, but still looks like they're not quite ready to turn the corner. And uh, you got Rogers the other direction, right down the road from us, right up uh, Highway 36, who leads Clifton 36 0 at the half, which is a nice, uh, nice job there by the Rogers Eagles uh, after uh, falling last week in a game to Buffalo where uh, they they played they were they were up 14-0 and then tied 14 all and then they swapped a couple of scores about two or three scores each in the third quarter before uh, turnovers just got them in the fourth. Rogers had um, seven true turnovers last week plus uh, they went for it on a, a, a fake punt I think and didn't get it. So you know technically eight turnovers you know it, it's tough to overcome. So yeah, nice to see them. Uh, Jump out and do well. Um, let's see other scores here. We got Mart leads Clifton or Chilton, I'm rather 43 nothing. Bremond over Frost 49 to seven. Uh, Milano over Bartlett only 17 to six. You know Bartlett struggled recently recent years, um, so they're, but they're playing them. Milano tough. Uh, Temple leads Magnolia West at halftime, 21-13. Um, you got Coach Rhodes down at Gregory Portland, only trading uh, Corpus Christi Moody, I, I believe it is, 21-14. to um, Game of, that Nate mentioned in the pregame show, uh, China Spring Cougars and the Gerald Cougars, um, China Spring leads them 38-0 to at the half. I, I, I think everybody's probably a little shocked that the score is that close. Um, Salado up on Gatesville, 56-3 to at the half. Salado's really got it going this year. Um, Grandview continuing to do with what they've been able to do the last couple of years um, and, and avenging a huge loss last year. You know, uh, they lost a district ball game to Whitney last year, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they're up in, right before half, with five seconds to go before halftime, they're up 58-0 to zero over Whitney. Um Liberty Hill, the slot team machine, is up 22 to 9 over Dell Valley. Uh, Brock, who is. I think number one right now, uh, which I don't understand how Grandview can be uh, can win two straight state championships, be as dominant yeah. as they are, and not be number one. But uh, for some reason, the, the sports writers think that Brock is better right now. So Brock's number one. They're up over Paradise, so, twenty-one to well, seven. Not the sports writers. It's Tex- Dave Campbell's There's, Texas football. Dave, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me there. I don't. I want to. I, don't well, I got hack off the, too. Yeah. the sports writers. Uh, but uh, let's see what else I got here. Uh, Malakoff, another stout team out of that area, uh, leads Teague. 49 to 0 at the half. Um, Thorndale, Milam County uh, School there, uh, up over Holland, 14 12 at the half. Um, Somerville Trails, Iola out of the College Station area, 20 to 14. Um, you got La Vega, uh, who, you know, I guess the Dallas Cowboys weren't available this week because they're playing Waxahachie Life, uh, and they they lead them 55 to 0 at the half. And um, Round Rock High School leads Belton. 35-14 at the half. And then uh, a score that's already gone final, um, Buckholtz um, fell tonight. Uh, mm. uh, actually, that game was played last night. They played it last night. They fell 44-40 um, to 40 in a close one uh, there. So, uh, And then Lago Vista, who we were supposed to play earlier, I'm not sure who they played, but they played last night a, a non-UIL opponent, and they won that one 63-0. to zero. So... Uh, they're rolling right now as well. Six man, that's close for six man. Forty four to forty. Yeah, you don't see a lot of a lot of games that are that close in six man. A lot of them are, you know, eighty two to twenty one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah well, or, or they're over by halftime. Yeah. Uh, not the case when it's that close, though. No, no. Uh, I guess that game probably went went the distance, which you don't see a lot even in six-man. No, you don't. All right, uh, get ready for our second half. Just about five minutes or so till we get to the second half kick. Uh, what we can do is we can talk a little bit more. Uh, in Texas, which is going to be our third quarter sponsor, and of course is also our touchdown sponsor. in Texas, of course, uh, is open Thursday through Saturday over at Arlen's parking lot. Uh, if you want top-notch Q, that is the place to go, let me tell you what. Yeah, that's good stuff. I know uh, Warren Wren won uh, one of the, the plates last week, uh, and, and I, I made a comment to him at the Booster Club meeting about it Monday night, and, and uh, he said that because I talk about it so much on the show here uh, during the game here that he was worried that I was going to beat him to it. Uh, but uh, no no worries there, uh, Warren. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go steal your barbecue. You, you, know, you steal a man's barbecue. That that's you know that that's a fight right there. Yeah, yeah. You don't do that. Uh, by the way, we draw a name for that. As uh, Yeoman, of course, if they score a touchdown in the third quarter, you win a three-eight plate from Etchewan, Texas Barbecue, which is really, really good stuff. Uh, meanwhile, let's uh, go ahead and close up shop here on the Jumania Halftime Report. When we come back on the other side, we'll kind of look ahead at what we're going to see here in the second half. How's that? Sounds good. All right, we're back in a moment. <laughs> Germania Insurance Halftime Report. Game nights on KMIL during Cameron Yo football. The second half of tonight's game is next. Welcome back here and with just about three minutes to go before we get to our second half kick and uh, the Yola trailing 20 to 9 here at the half for the Rockdale Tigers of the annual Battle of the Bell. And, um, Kenny, one of the things we haven't talked about is something you just mentioned off the air and that is that Really, the loss last week to McGregor can do a couple of different things. And one of those things is it could motivate you to be better moving forward. And that may be what we're seeing with Rockdale. Yeah, exactly. You know, that those type of losses, you know, they, they like you said, they can do one of two things. They can absolutely break your spirit mm-hmm. um, or they can uh, refocus you and re-motivate you to, you know, to step back and examine yourself and say, wait a minute, you know, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing here. We're not taking care of our business here. Uh, let's refocus, regroup, and uh, do what we're supposed to do. And I, right now it looks like that's the, the approach that it, it, it's put forth for Rockdale because uh, they've come ready to play tonight. There is no doubt about it. Yeah, they, they have had things figured out from really what it feels like from the get-go here tonight. Yeah, they really have. I mean, they there's very, very little mistakes other than the fumble, uh, I guess, uh, on, on the Rocksdale side of the ball. So, nearing our second half, let's draw a name for some free barbecue or a potential for free barbecue. Randy Purvis is the name we've drawn. So, if the Owen will score a touchdown here in this third quarter... Brought to you by Echo in Texas. That'll be a three-meat plate for Randy Purvis. We'll draw another name, of course, if the Oma do score a touchdown in this quarter. The Oma got to find uh, some ways to put some points on the board. They will get the ball first, and I think that helps your momentum, right? Oh, yeah, definitely it does. You know, especially when we can, you know, muster up a good return like Fabian had last time. Um, of course, you know, you got to be uh, aware in a ball game like this. You never know. Rockdale, you know, they knew their backs were kind of against the wall. They, they got woke after last week's loss. You know, they, they may have, you know, some trickeration and, and, and an onside kick or something up their sleeve here. you got to make sure you're prepared for all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, you got to, especially in this ball game, because anything can happen. Yeah, you know, it, it, we, we said in the beginning of, of the pregame show, it's the Battle of the Bell, and so you can throw out all the records. It doesn't matter if, if it was in Week 10 and you had one team was 9-0 and another one was 0-9, uh, you can throw all those records out because they don't matter in this ball game. So getting ready for our second half kickoff, which will be brought to you by Little River Event Center. We'll get to receive here to start the second half. As the halftime has ended, both teams have retaken the field. And the 66th annual Battle of the Bell, and right now it's 20 to 9. The Tigers have been out front. It's, uh, we often like to compare these two football heavyweights, boxers, when they take the field against each other, and I feel like Rockdale really had 
and came out of the mouth and then didn't know how to respond. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we came out and, and, you know, they hit us with some punches and, and we hit them with some punches right back and, and, uh, they hit us with some punches and then we kind of went into defensive mode there, I guess you'd say, if you're wanting boxer terminology. So, uh, we need to come out swinging right here to start this at second half. I think you have to, to find some momentum and get control back of this ball game. Yeah, and that's, you know, uh, exactly right. It, it, we've got to do something to regain some momentum here. Uh, momentum can become such a big part of a game, uh, especially one with as much uh, on the line as this one is tonight. So kickoff coming up, brought to you by Little River Event Center. And now our Etcho and Texas third quarter is underway. It's a line drive kick. That will be fielded at the 30-yard line off the ground. Now coming across the field. He's going to break through one tackle, carrying the football. And a little bit scary, and he will let it go, cough it off. And the Tigers have recovered and a fumble by the Owen on the kickoff return. Pharrell just trying to fight for more yards right there. Might have been better uh, suited just to go down there uh, because he had about four guys that he was trying to carry with him, and they ripped the ball out and fell on it uh, right before it, it squirted out of bounds. So a turnover here to start the second half, and Rockdale is in business and has a chance now potentially to break this game open if the Oldman cannot bowl up defensively. Yeah, I mean, we talked about momentum and needing to, to you know, establish something on offense. Well, right now we're going to have to establish some momentum on defense. Moving right to left on the radio dial. It's going to be a carry by the quarterback right up the right side he goes and picks up nice yardage, about four yards on the carry. You know, he's, it's that zone read looking play there. The interesting thing about it is, is when they fake it to Valdez, he actually goes backwards at an angle, uh, as opposed to going forward there. Uh, you know, I don't, I wonder if that's something that, uh, you know, we could use as a key on when they're going to hand it and when the, the, the Miller kid, or Mitchell kid is going to pull it. From the 29 yard line, it's going to be a second and six. Two receivers off to the right side, but they're going to throw this one after a quick pull. That ball tipped in the air by the open and caught by Rockdale, and now he is going to be trying to reach forward for first down, but instead he's going to go down at the 24 yard line. Oh, Pharrell stepped in front of that pass right there and almost intercepted it, but instead it went off, glanced off in his hands and went straight up in the air and fell right into the Rockdale receiver's hands. And so the we take the second long, and we, we turn into a thir third and short again. Yeah, but have not had a lot of luck tonight on those kind of plays. Got a couple of balls that have jump balls, really, that have not come their way. On second and short, or, or excuse me, third and short, hand off, up the middle, maybe got a, a yard, half a yard out of it. Initially, we had him stop for no gain, and it looked like I thought he was fixing to be able to lunge forward and get the first down, but I think we, we, uh, I think we stopped him short. It's going to be fourth and one, actually plus fourth and less than one. So on fourth down, about ten minutes to change to go here in the Echo in Texas third quarter. Tigers out in front, 20 to nine over the Omen. And the Tigers with the football driving deep in your territory. From the 24-yard line, it's a handoff to Valdez. He has got to skirt the first tackle, and then will get up near the line of scrimmage for the marker for first down. And it will be enough for a first down, barely. And the Yeoman actually thought that they had stopped him short there. They had a lot of excitement, uh, but uh, I think a little last-second lunge got it for Valdez, who's actually got a little limp to him right now. Looks like he's going to come come out of the ball game. So first and ten, checking it for him, Davion Scott. First and ten for the Tigers. Inside of ten minutes left in this quarter. Rockdale out in front here in the Battle of the Bell. And deep in your territory from the 23-yard line of Cameron. Scott was actually a reserve tailback for the Yeoman last year. Uh, moved uh, in the spring uh, over to Rockdale. And time out being taken here by the Tigers. Their first, and so that will, they will take a timeout with them. A nine and a half to go here in the third quarter. This is Yo Football on 105 with the Ranch. 
There's something in your home's air this fall. Feel it? It's the perfect air that comes from reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. There are savings in the air, too. Cox's Heating and AC is offering $13.50 in rebates, plus payments as low as $132 a month on a new Lennox system. To rethink your air and learn more, call Cox's Heating and AC, 254-697-4252. For great products, big savings, and perfect air, think Cox's Heating and AC, your local Lennox dealer. Condition supply, see dealer for details. License number TACLB00943-2E. Here on our Etcho in Texas third quarter, 9 minutes, 27 seconds left in this quarter. Tigers have taken their first time out. They lead it 20 to 9 over the Omen. And a first and 10 here from the 22-yard line. It's going to be a out off for a pitch here to Keshawn Raven, but he'll be bottled up in the backfield and a loss of major yardage. Yeah, the no defense really... Uh, it was almost like the, the offensive line was non-existent on that play. I mean, the, the whole Yo defense was in on, as uh, Ravens was taking the handoff there. It looked like he went down about the 29-yard line, but they're going to mark him at the 25. So a second and 12. Or making that second and 13 here for the Tigers. Two receivers to the left side here for Mitchell. The junior checks the sideline for a different play. Now takes a snap. He's looking to throw. Looking right. It's going to go that way. That ball, though, is nearly picked off and also ends up out of bounds for an incomplete. Yeah, they were trying to post up the big um, six foot four inch. Um, what's that young man's name? Dansby Kid. And uh, had excellent coverage on him and throw was behind him and out of bounds. So a third down and 13 coming up here for the Tigers. At the 25 yard line. Valdez has not checked back into the game here, so I'd be surprised if Mitchell doesn't carry the ball in this play. Two receivers bunched tight in the formation. Mitchell steps into it, fires. Kishon Raven makes the catch and survives a hit up near the first down marker, and it's enough for a Rockdale first down. I tell you, Randy Flores really punished him on that hit, uh, but, man, we got to get in there and knock that ball to the ground and not allow him to, to, to get that first down when they're that far behind the sticks. The first and 10 from the 11-yard line for the Tigers. Rockdale leading 20 to 9. Eight minutes, 20 seconds left in the Echo in Texas third quarter. Two receivers to the left side. They're going to hand off around the right, but tripping and falling and then just kind of crawling <laughs> across the 10-yard line. Yeah, I feel like they gave him uh, really about two or three yards more than he earned there because he went to his knee so quick and just kind of crawled on his and I feel like they gave him a few more yards than he deserved. Well, actually, they originally marked him at the 9, but have now backed it up to the 11 and gave him no gain. Yeah, and Valdez has checked back into the ball game now. That was who was on the carry, correct. So, two receivers to each side here for Mitchell on a second down and 10. And this time, he's going to pull it and keep it. Quarterback, though, is going to be smothered. Breaks out of a couple of tackles. Now he's down the sideline. He goes and into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Wow, Brett, I think we were trying. It looked like we were, we had a hold of the ball, and we were trying to steal the ball out of his hands. And uh, the young man is just so, so electric that he just spun out of it and went down the sideline for the, the final 11 yards there pretty much untouched. There is a touchdown for Rockdale. 26 to 9 is the score. An injured player is down. I believe that is a yeoman on the far side of the field. Yeah, that's that's way away from the play. At a complete opposite direction of the play. Well, 26 to 9 is the new score. Tigers. That's, that's that's pretty rough right there. That's heartbreaking, Brett, because we had the young man, you know, corralled up in the backfield for, you know, we're we're fixing to sack him there, and uh, man, he just spins out of it, and, and uh, just what an electrifying athlete that young man is, just to be able to to spin out of that tackle and, and get right down the sideline as quickly as he was. Well, at uh, seven thirty-two on the clock, a player is going to walk off now. Looks like it's Hemphill. The Tigers are expecting probably to kick an extra point here. Leading the Omen big here in the third quarter. The 
though, and really needing right now to not let emotions get the best of them here in the second half. And it looks like they're going to go for the convert, the two-point conversion here. They are lining up that way. It's going to be a two-back set. Raven to the left and Crawford, or excuse me, Baltez to the right. Single receivers to each side. Raven goes in motion. Look that direction. And that ball is going to be caught. They kind of used Raven in motion as a little bit of eye candy to pull people's eyes away uh, and, and widen our defense out a little bit. And then uh, the Dansbury kid ran a quick slant uh, up underneath us there for the two-point conversion. So 28-9 to nine is the new score after the two-point conversion is good. 7.32 on the clock. And Rockdale is leading big here over the Cameron Yelvin in the Battle of the Bell. You're listening to Yo Football, another five on the ranch. Are you or a loved one in need of home health care? Wondering if you qualify for home health services? Call Standards Home Health for a free in-home consultation to evaluate your situation and to select a home health professional to care for you and your needs. And Standards Home Health is covered 100% by Medicare and accepts TRICARE, Scott & White Health Plan, and most major insurances. So don't wait. Get the care you deserve. Call Standards Home Health at 1-888-671-7007. Welcome back here in the Etchuan, Texas third quarter here in Rockdale. Right now, the Rockdale Tigers leading in the 66th annual Battle of the Bell. Score now 28 to 9. Rockdale recovering the fumble on a kickoff. And number 42. And then punching it in by the quarterback, Kobe Mitchell. And the Tigers have extended their lead and acquired a two point conversion to make it 28 to 9. 7.32 to go in this Etchewood, Texas third quarter. And the Yelman really now behind the eight ball. It's going to be an onside kick. That will get through the first line of defense. Now giving chase is the Yelman. They're going to back up inside the 20 yard line. Now still giving room and still going backwards and finally goes down. And that is going to end up as a. Negative return. Yeah, uh, Scorian misplayed the bounce there, and so then he had to retreat, had to, had to pick the ball up, moving oh, towards their end zone, and, and it just allowed for the, the the defensive pursuit to to get there, and, and and just unable to get anything going for the Yeoman on that return. Well, that's going to put the Yeoman deep in their own territory from their own 19-yard line. First and 10 here for the Yeoman, trailing 28-9. to The Yeoman are definitely losing the special teams battle so far here tonight, even though we did have that one good return. Or at least in the second half, for sure. Three receivers off to the left. The Yeoman moving from left to right on the radio dial. And looking to throw a Zyder, but he is going to be swung down into the turf inside, or just outside the 10-yard line at the 11. And a sack for the Tigers. And for a second, I wasn't sure that was going to happen. The, the Tiger defender that had the first shot at him ran right by him. Yeah, it, it was. And, and really, that's kind of a coverage sack right there. The offensive line didn't do a bad job there. Uh, Zane had a little bit of time, but uh, just didn't have anybody open downfield. It's about a nine-yard loss. It'll be a second down and 19 now. Grips off to the left side. It's not... Zyner takes off running, though, and he'll go down after about a 10-yard gain, 12-yard gain. Yeah, and, and, you know, really that the play, I think it was a pass play there, uh, but it, it it almost worked like a quarterback draw, and sometimes that's the best way to to get your quarterback free on a little inside run there is if you run all your receivers off and they're not open, you know, it, it just it looks more real than a draw because the blind linemen are, are actually pass blocking versus draw blocking. It's so a third down and eight. This is a big third down for the Yeoman, trying to find some kind of momentum here in the second half. Twin receivers to each side as Zyder looks to throw. Let's one go towards his left side, and that ball is going to be caught, and then he is going to be brought down by sure looked like a face mask. I mean, the head went down first. Yeah, Case and Goolsby had the catch uh, for the first down. But his momentum kind of carried him backwards, and when he was slung down, he fumbled the ball out of bounds uh, a sh- about a yard short of the first down, uh, uh, forcing Yeoman to bring the punting team on the field here. So a punt for the offense. Inside of six minutes, 
to go here in this Etchewood, Texas third quarter. Gilman running some folks on late here. As they are lined up to call on fourth and one. Trailing 28 to 9 here in the Battle of the Bell. One man is deep, the flags come out. Yeah, it's going to be a delay of game here. Um, delay of game, number four of the offense. Gilman having a hard time getting everybody out on the field there on that play. It causes us to not get the snap off inside. So a. Well, was a fourth and one, and instead will be fourth and six for another punting attempt. Returner back for the Tigers at about his own 40-yard line. And Zinert will get this one away barely. It's going to be a low-line drive. That'll be fielded about the 44-yard line. Now working his way upfield to 45. Flags come in, it looked like, and that eventually will be going down at the 46. Young man got a great uh, candy hop bounce there uh, to be able to field the ball, uh, but then ran into one of his own blockers as we were trying to tackle him there. Uh, and then, of course, the flag came in. We're not sure exactly what that one is yet. Yeah, so maybe discussing that now. I'm thinking maybe it might be a block in the back to where that flag occurred at. Well, 5.48 on the clock after the Rocket return. Back. Number 13 of the return team. And it will be a block in the back against Rockdale. the Tigers. So that will actually give Rockdale the football from their own 38-yard line. First and, and 10 for Rockdale. First and 10 from their own The Elba have got to figure out a way to stop the Rockdale offense right now. Yeah, you know, it's... it's when you're trailing, you, you have to have the ball because you have to score. And so far here in this third quarter, we've had the ball, what, three plays, Brett? It's going to be the quarterback trying to find some running room, but nothing doing. Nine, it goes down. Yo, defense did a great job of uh, reading that uh, that quarterback read right there that he was going to pull the ball from Valdez and uh, wrapping Mitchell up in the background for the loss there. Nice job again by the, the sophomore outside linebacker, uh, Landon Green. So three-yard loss makes it second and 13. It's out of 520 to go here in this third quarter. One receiver's off to the left side for Mitchell. Quarterback takes a snap. He's going to have this off to Valdez. And he is going to fight his way for an extra yard, and that's tough running right there to the teeth of the defense. Yeah, the Yo defense is really stiffening up on this series. Uh, exactly what we need uh, to get the ball back for the Yo offense to go and try to put some points on the board. Clock continues to run for the open, though, and that's going to become an issue. The Tigers, as you mentioned at halftime, have been seriously draining clock every time they've had the football. I would assume that the Tigers plan on putting the ball in the air here. Uh, we've got to get some pressure on Mitchell early uh, and, and get a hand on him and get him on the ground. He's had way too much time to throw the ball when he's one or two tonight. Three receivers to the left for Mitchell. He's looking to throw, looking that way, steps up in the pocket, takes off running to his right, lets one go on the run, and that ball I think is picked off by the omen. Yeah, had pressure on him there, and so Pharrell Hemphill stepped in front of the pass. and. Oh. Incomplete. Oh, they called it incomplete. I thought for, I thought Pharrell caught that ball, but I guess it must have fell to the turf. So it goes down as an incomplete, and it'll be fourth down instead for the Tigers. Could have very easily been offensive pass interference there as well. So 4.23 on the clock. Although the Tigers not in a position to punch presently. They're at a, now backing up is going to be Mitchell. Much like what the Yeomen do uh, very often. So he will punt this ball, and that's going to be a good punt, backing up the return man, and that ball is going to continue to bounce. It's fielded at an inside the 10-yard line, now trying to find his way upfield. Spins out of a tackle there, and finally is going to be suplexed into the 10-yard line. That is an absolutely perfect description of that tackle right there, Brett, is, is a suplex. Uh, they just picked poor Jaden Sanchez up. and just, or, or was it Sanchez or was it Goolsby? Uh, this young man looks so much alike, Goolsby, actually, uh, and, and just basically threw him over his shoulder onto the ground. So the Yeoman will have the football from their own 10-yard line, first and 10. And if the Yeoman are going to get back into this ball game, they're going to have to get moving with the offense now. It's a great defensive stand by the Yeoman, but another uh, special teams. I'm, I just I kind of hate to call it a gaff, but that's kind of what it was. We really didn't have our punt returner set deep enough for the for the kick there. 4:15 on the clock. Yeoman trailing 28 to nine in this ball game. 
Tigers bring pressure as Zydert rolls to his right. He's going to throw, and it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. We'll bring up a second team. I like getting Zydert on the move. Yeah, rolling him out right there because they're bringing that pressure so hard from the inside right there, and, and we're using our running back to kind of come forward and, and provide a little bit of protection on the edge on the side we roll there and, and run a ran, a ran a deep pattern with a couple of underneath routes, but uh, Zane just let it slide a little bit too far outside to out of bounds before he was able to get the, the our receiver and uh, in an area where he could make the catch. So 4.09 on the clock here in the intro in Texas third quarter. Second down and 10 for the over from their own 10-yard line. Two receivers to the right, and they just get this one off before the play clock expires. It's a handoff around the left side, breaks through the first defender. A flag comes in after about a four-yard gain. And where that flag is thrown, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess for, uh, right now that that's probably a face mask. Uh, it's on the other side of the field, so it's hard to tell for sure. I believe that's what it might be. Waiting on that penalty call. Flag on the play. Personal foul, face mask, number 16 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, so, automatic first down. 15-yard penalty against the Tigers on a face mask, and that will help the Yeoman out with a first down. Yeah, that definitely bails us out, gets us out of the, the shadow of our in, own end zone there, gives us a, a fresh set of downs where maybe we can get something going here. And, you know, we ran the ball right there. It's something we we haven't done uh, with any success for the fight, and that's something that you know, would be nice to establish going forward. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Zydert fires to his left, and that ball's incomplete. Uh, the intended receiver, Goolsby, looks like he fell down on that play. So. so after an incomplete pass, it'll be a second and 10. 3.50 on the clock. Here in this Etchua, Texas third quarter, right now the Omen. Struggling 28 to 9 is the score. The Tigers leading here in the Battle of the Bell. Two back set this time for the Omens. Two receivers to the right side for Zyder. It's going to be a keeper for the quarterback, but he is finding little to no running room, and he'll go down for a loss of a yard. And I'm not sure that that was a busted play right there, Brett. Uh, made by number 16, but it, just, it, it, it didn't get it didn't look good from the start. Brings up, a third Brings up third down for the Cameron offense. Struggling to find running any kind of room here against the Tiger defense. Third and 11. Clock running inside 320 to go in this quarter. Yellow trailing by 19 in this ball game. 28 to 9 is the score. Quit receivers to each side as Zinert looks to his left. Now rolling to his right. Still rolling. Tries to dodge one defender, and he's going to throw short and complete. Now the Oma now forced into a punting situation. On fourth down. And Zane flushed out of the pocket again with the pressure up the front and uh, just did a good job of escaping the pressure and getting outside. I thought he might be able to, to find a receiver downfield, but uh, just underthrew him a little bit there. So 3-0-2. Is what's on the clock here in this third quarter. The Elman getting ready to send a punt off here. Trailing 28 to 9. Struggling to move the football. There's a bouncing punt that's going to continue to bounce. Rolls inside the Tiger 40 and will be down at the 40 yard line. The jump roll is the Rockville 39. The Tigers first and 10. So, it's just under three minutes to go in this Etchua, Texas third quarter. The Elmwood find themselves trailing 28 to 9 here in the 66th annual Battle of the Bell. The Elmwood try to find anything that works offensively right now, though. Everything coming up empty. Yeah, I believe we've had one first down here in this third quarter uh, on about seven or eight plays, and that was on the, the personal foul penalty. Well, the Yeoman trying to figure things out on the offense. The defense had a good first, well, good second series. And here they are, now pushed into action again. Hand off here for Valdez. Tries to find his way up the middle, in the middle of the pile. And we've got a scrum over here at the 30-yard line. Two men went tackled each other. But Valdez picks up about three tough yards there. 
Yeah, the defensive front did a good job of kind of really containing him right there, not letting him get loose. Uh, he had Keyson Ravens and Iverson Brazil kind of had a tussle downfield. Uh, nobody seemed to be too concerned about it, though. Yeah, that was way down here. They were, both of them were on the ground. It's like a wrestling match. Second down and about eight here for the Tigers. Looking to throw is Mitchell trying to dump off a screen pass. That ball is tipped and still caught by the tailback. Right? It, uh, <laughs> I can't believe he caught that. Yeah, wow. What a play. Just a little, uh, they faked the handoff to him and he snuck up behind the, uh, the offensive lineman and they all leaked out. And uh, I think it was Trenton Nix and it uh, got a piece of the ball. But uh, Cameron right. Valdez yeah. still able to haul it in and, and pick up the first down. Tipped it right into the hands of, of Valdez. He then takes off and picks up enough down. They've got the ball at midfield. First and 10 here for the Tigers. Three receivers bunched to the left side, but it's going to be a handoff for Valdez here. He's going to squirt around the right side, breaks through one tackle, down dodges another one, that finally is tripped up by the shoelaces, I think. Yeah, Pharrell Hemphill luckily uh, tripped him up right there because if not, he was about to take that one about another 40 yards to the house as well. Coming up on a minute and a half to go in the Echo in Texas third quarter, and sure feels like... The Tigers had a football for almost the entire third quarter. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I think I think we've run about seven or maybe eight plays this quarter. Uh, I don't know how many they've run, but it's uh, three or four times that amount, I would believe. Second and two coming up on about a minute left in this third quarter. It's trips to the left for Mitchell. And he's looking to throw it. Instead, he's going to take off on a delayed handle or delayed keeper, I guess. And he's going to pick up enough yards for a first down. Got about seven there on the carry. Nine, yeah, just a, a basically a quarterback draw right there. Step back and, and kind of bounced a, a, a once or twice like he's going to throw the ball and then just took off right up and, uh, and a little seam he found there. Inside of a minute left in this quarter, Tigers on the move, leading 28 to 9 here in the Battle of the Bell. Yeoman reeling right now. Three receivers set again to the left side. Here for the Tigers. Checking the sideline again. Now taking the snap. And it'll be Valdez here. He'll pick. Lose about a yard, I think. And that young man looks really, really tired, Brett. Uh, but I think, uh, and I believe that's going to be the last play of the quarter there. Uh, Rockdale's uh, moving to the sideline. 14 seconds left to go. going to let the clock run out there. But uh, that young man is very tired, but uh, he, he's, a, he's one heck of a ball player. 24 carries, 131 yards. That is a stat update by McElrath Motors and Cameron. It's called Enter Joey, 697-4655. Let them find the perfect vehicle for you. Give you some other numbers, uh, thanks to McElrath Motors. Zane Zinert, 6 of 16, passing 60 yards. Uh, Zachorian, well, the t- leading rusher, Zane Zinert, 6 for 20. And Pharrell Hemphill, 3 carries, 9 yards, and a touchdown. And that's... Uh, well, that's the majority of the offense. Yeah, and you're talking about McElrath Motors, uh, Brett. They've got a couple of really sweet rides over there right now. They've got a, a Chevy SS that is a, a really sweet automobile. It's an Australian-made car, and uh, it can get it, Brett, let me tell you. And then that, I think they got a couple of those Gladiator uh, Jeep trucks over there, yeah. too. Pretty nice. Well, the, the best thing about McElrath Motors, though, is that if they don't have it, tell them what you want, they'll go get it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll take care of you. All right, let's uh, start our fourth quarter here. Tonight's fourth quarter, of course, is made possible by the O Athletic Booster Club. They support the camera going on and off the field. You can become a member and join the Booster Club. They meet on Monday nights. Uh, still, Yeah, the meetings are still at 7 o'clock at the Cameron Country Club right now. And you can obviously you can join there uh, or if you want to com, you can join on our, uh, on our uh, online store. This is going to be a... Keeper here by a quarterback, and he'll just run out of bounds after about a five-yard gain. Yeah, basically kind of a, a, a coverage run right there. Um, we had everybody covered. He dropped back to pass. We had everybody covered, and so he just uh, tucked it and got as much as he could get there. Tigers now with the continue on their drive. Third and five coming up for the Tigers. They have the ball at the old 31-yard line. Leading in this ballgame 28-9 to here in the fourth quarter. And for the Tigers moving from left to right on the radio dial. And looking to throw is Mitchell. He's going to step into this one. That ball is 
leave caught by Kevron Valdez, and he is going to be inside the 10-yard line before he's finally brought down, and that was a juggling catch. Yeah, we were, we were stunting there, and so we were a man short whenever uh, he leaked out in the backfield, and uh, Mitchell was able to just kind of flip it up there to him, and, and he almost didn't catch it, but he did, and, and then he almost stumbled to the ground, but golly, that guy's such an athlete. Brett, he put his hand down and, and was able to fight for a couple more yards before we were finally able to wrestle him on the ground. So, a first and goal for the Tigers from the O seven yard line of the open right now with no answers for the Rockdale Tigers. Trips off to the left side. One man alone to the right. Valdez will get the call. Trying to find his way around the right side. Nearly breaks out of one tackle, but finally three or four more Hillman arrived to help out. Yeah, we had uh, you know, our whole pretty much our whole linebacker core in on that tackle right there with Fabian Solomon and, and Colton Barbo and Landon Green uh, providing some some excellent uh, uh, work right there on the on the defensive side for the Hillman. Inside of 11 minutes to go in this ball game, second and goal coming up for the Tigers from their Yo 11 yard line. Rockdale out in front, 28 to 9, with time ticking away here in the fourth. Yelma needing a stop as Mitchell looks to throw for the end zone. He's got a man streaking in, and that ball is going to be dropped. That's Keyshawn Ravens there, uh, dropping that ball. A young man that, uh, as highly recruited as he's been, you wouldn't expect to see. So after the incomplete, third down and goal from the 11th. Ten and a half minutes to go in this ball game. Tell you, clock management for the Rockdale Tigers has been, if you would call it a recruit, it's a five star recruit. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been A plus work, that's for sure. 28 to 9 is the score. Rockdale Tigers with the football looking for more. And Valdez is out of the game again. He was hobbling, so the Scott kid has checked back in at running back. And Mitchell looking at throw again, looking in zone towards the middle. He's got Raven there, but I think he's going to be just a yard short. Yeah, he's kind of running that skinny post there uh, from the, the slot receiver position. And luckily for El Hemp, he was there uh, kind of in a safety position to, to make the tackle just short of the goal line. That looked like almost the same play. Yeah, I think it was the uh, exact same play there. Fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Tiger offense stays on the field. Inside would, of 10 minutes to go. I would expect to see Mitchell carry the ball here uh, with the Valdez out of the ball game. Uh, instead... We're going to get a timeout. Timeout, Kimber, the first of the half. By the here. So a Cameron timeout. We'll take one with him with 9.53 left in this ball game. The Omen reeling big time right now. 28-9 to 9 is the score. The Tigers out in front looking for more. This is your football at 105 on the Ranch. Legacy Nursing and Rehabilitation, located at 2202 North Travis in Cameron, is proud to back the Fighting Cameron Yeoman in 2020. Good luck to all Yo and Lady Yo athletes, trainers, coaches, cheerleaders, Bell Brigade, and that award-winning Yo High Band. Most people have a story to tell. Yo Nation has a legend. Legacy Nursing and Rehabilitation is proud to say... here in this fourth quarter, but the Ullman have a big hole to dig themselves out of right now, but could get even worse. It's fourth and one for the Rockdale Tigers from the one-yard line. Yeah, it's a... It, it, we, if there's ever time to, to bow your neck and uh, stand, you know, stepping up, this is it right here. Less than ten minutes to go in this ball game. The Tigers looking to add to the score and extend their lead up 28-9. to nine. And flags... We had a false start by the... So that pushes the Tigers back. We'll see if that changes what they do. False start. That's a different call. I'm not sure I've seen that one. Yeah, not, 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 that's a new one. That, that one doesn't happen very often. Fourth down and six now. Tigers still electing to go for it on fourth down. Looking for the end zone. Mitchell trying to pass. That ball through his hands and incomplete. Pretty good coverage, but uh, Mitchell was under some major duress right there. I think it was, uh, I'm not sure it was Mondo Reyes or somebody else was coming hard off the edge right there and forced him to throw that probably a split second before he wanted to. So 28-9 to 
is the score here in the fourth quarter. Less than 10 minutes left in this ball game. The Yeoman will have the ball. They'll take over after the turnover on downs from their own what, six yard line. The defense did their job. They did what they had to do there. So it's up to the Yeoman offense to come out here and, and uh, you know go the length of the field and put some points on the board and close this gap. Yellen will have 94 yards to go to get to the end zone. Trailing 28 to 9 with 9.48 on the clock. And it's going to be a handoff, and he is going to be fighting to get out of the end zone. He won't do it. Safety. And I think he fumbled that handoff and uh, was trying to pick it up on the run there. Or no. They say he is going to be down at the one yard line. He was down in the end zone, but they were saying he's down at the one. Yeah, I think it's well inside the one yard line. It, it might we might on the one inch line there, Brett. When he got up, he was in a sea of blue. Yes, his his body was definitely laying in the blue. From the half yard line. So they yeah, they're gonna put it at the half yard line. Yeah, second down and fifteen. Yeah, they're calling it the half yard line. I'm not sure it's that far out of the zone. From their own end zone. Hand off here, and he's going to struggle forward for a couple of yards, and that will at least give them a little breathing room. I think that was Keyshawn Johnson uh, in uh, kind of our power back that we've used in some short yardage situation, just trying to pound the ball out of the end zone a little bit here, get us a little bit of breathing room. So third and 13 now for the Omen here. Clock continues to run inside eight and a half minutes to go. The Omen really going to be squeezed for time here the way Rockdale's been running the clock. 28-9 28-9 to nine is the score. Yeoman facing third and long. Third and 13. You pretty much got to put the ball in the air here. The two back set. Single receivers to each side for the Yeoman. And looking to throw. That ball is going to be a slant. Knocked away by the defender. And it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Play broke. Brings up fourth down. Anthony Dansley. Trying to get a quick one out to Pharrell Hemphill out there so he can make some, you know, maybe make something happen against Dansby uh, one on one. But Dansby's a good player out there, Brett. He's stepped in front and knocked the ball down. Stop the clock with 8.14 to go. And forces a punting situation here for the Yeoman. If you were Rocktail, do you bring the house? Uh, I don't think I would here. Um, I think I would, you know, you're going to get the ball in great field position. Um, and, and you got a three, you know, three score lead. I, I, I think I would just play it straight up right here, uh, take the good field position, and try to go put some more points on the board from that direction. Now this play is going to be stopped before it starts. Timeout, Cameron. Their second of the half. Cameron takes a timeout. That's their second one. Still eight minutes to go. Yeoman. Trailing 28-9. We'll take a timeout with them. We're back in 30 seconds. This is your football on the ranch. This is Brad Vosselin with Cameron Farm and Ranch Company. We realize firsthand all the hard work and dedication that all high school students put in to perform their best on game day. We also know how hard producers work to keep their livestock and crops performing at their best. Stop in and we'll find the tools you need to keep your animals in shape and performing well. At Cameron Farm and Ranch, we're in the game on fourth and inches. And around here, when we say go yo, we mean... Tiger Stadium is the omen right now, trailing 28 to 9, facing fourth down and from their own end zone, looking to have to punt here. And I think you might be looking at the house coming after this one. There is no one. There was no one wide for the omen. They brought everybody in to protect, and now a punt gets off. That's going to be Fielding. He'll make a return up across the 35-yard line to the 34. And that's about the best could, the omen could hope for there. Uh, got a decent kickoff and did a good job of getting down the field and covering that young man on the return uh, before he could really get going too much there. Uh, I say that, that that's about as good as we could hope for. 8 3 on the clock. That's all that's left in this ball game. And if you are a Rockdale Tiger fan, you are counting down the seconds already. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm sure Rockdale would like to put another score on the board here, but I bet they really want to try to run this clock too. So I'd be surprised if we don't see a heavy dose of the run uh, here the rest of the way. With just about eight minutes to go in the ball game, Raven in motion goes back and forth, and they're going to hand it off to 
Valdez. He'll come forward for about a yard. And Barbo in on another tackle. That's another sophomore, Brett, that, man, he, he's really playing above his age uh, with his play right there, uh, both Barbo and Green. I'm just continue to be super impressed with those two young linebackers for the old defense. Second down and eight after the two-yard game from Valdez. Coming up on seven and a half minutes to go in the ball game. 28 to 9 is the score. The Tigers out in front with the football in Yo territory. Three receivers now off to the left as Valdez goes out wide. It's dead quarterback got a keeper. Mitchell working his way forward. Stiff arms one man then goes out of bounds and bowls over a ball boy. Yikes. I think he's okay though. Yeah. <laughs> he went with a tuck and roll, luckily. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know young man could have got hurt. Uh, could have. Yeah, because uh, 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 Mitchell's not little. Five foot ten, one seventy five. Seven twenty one on the clock now. It's a third and seven for the Tigers. Defense needs to stop right now. Rockdale out in front, twenty eight to nine in this ball game. Interesting to see if they put the ball in the air here. They like to keep it on the ground, and try to run some more clock. Will be a handoff, and that is going to be. Two ball dead. Uh, now that's actually, I believe, Raven. Yeah, that's Ravenhood yeah, uh, lined up in the in the backfield, and uh, Eduardo Gill shot his gap and, and uh, got a hold of him before he got going. But it looks like I think he may have got a face mask on that. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, Raven kind of fell on the ground as though that was what happened. I never actually saw the flag, but I heard the announcer say, "There it is." Uh, Ravens got on a pair of yellow cleats and a pair of yellow gloves that are the exact same color as the official flag. And so uh, is it sometimes... <laughs> if just, he's near it? Yeah, if he's near it or, or you know... He, he, Did he lose his or shoe? if you see him running around out there, you think, was that a flag on the field? You know, it's just... I, I don't like it. <laughs> I'll, just say, I'll just say it that way. I don't like it. Well, that penalty, personal foul, 15-yard right. He puts the Tigers inside the red zone. First to 10 from the O's 16 yard line. Tigers leading 28 to 9 inside of seven minutes to go in the ball game and looking for the end zone. And that ball is going to be knocked away. And uh, that's a good defensive play right there. That is uh, for uh, Hemphill with the face guarding on, uh, is it Dansbury or Dansby or however you say his name there? I think it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Pharrell was basically space guarding him, uh, which you know a lot of people uh, you know complain about. But the thing is, space guarding is legal in high school. Yeah, you can't do it in the pros, but in high school, it's legal. Makes it a smart play. Second yeah. down and ten after the incomplete, and right there, that was Rockdale looking for the kill shot. Yeah, it was. Leading twenty-eight to nine. Second down and ten. Mitchell from the shotgun. Three receivers off to his right side. He is going to keep this one after t pulling it away from Valdez, and he's going to try to stay in bounds near the first down marker. He goes, and he might have got rolled out of bounds by a defender, but I think I think he uh, he threw on the brakes and tried to to stop and go down in bounds, but I think he slipped and slid out of bounds there, stopping the clock. So 6:35 is what is left in this ball game. Should be third and short, third and about three, it looks like. Here for the Tigers. Ball is at the nine-yard line of Cameron Yo. Deep in Yo territory here in the fourth quarter. At 6.35 on the clock, Tigers leading 28 to 9. Raven in motion. He's going to get the football. And he's going to break through one tackle and into the end zone he goes. Wow, Brett. We had him absolutely bottled up for no gain there. And uh, he just slips about four guys and just scoots right into the end zone right there. Stays the lead now to 34-9 to over the Yeoman. The Yeoman have not found an answer here in the second half. Extra point try coming up for the Tigers here. That kick is going to be up, and that will be good. 35-9 to 9 is the score here in Rockdale. 
and that may be the nail in the coffin. Yeah, it's, it's pretty insurmountable uh, with six and a half minutes uh, to score uh, you know, 26 points. That would be pretty difficult. Uh, we've seen some huge comebacks uh, in, in football here recently. Uh, uh, University of Texas with a huge comeback last week uh, down uh, I think they were down 15 with uh, three and a half minutes to go or something like that. Uh, but uh, 26 um, with 630 is, is going to be pretty insurmountable, I'm afraid. Cameron does have the weapons to make a kind of comeback like that. you got plenty of speed. Yeah, we've got we've got playmakers. Figured out how all, to get to it. Yeah, we've got playmakers all over the field. We just haven't been able to break one of them loose yet, uh, and so you know we, we've we've got to figure out a way to get some of those guys some balls, the ball in space. Six thirty to go in the ball game. Tigers out in front, thirty-five to nine. Here in the sixty-sixth annual Battle of the Bell. They'll have dominated the series traditionally with forty-four wins in the series. And have won the last two, but Rockdale poised to take the bell back, or at least keep it here. Yeah. <laughs> Kicking off for the Tigers. Tigers going to kick off here. Disappointing, too, Brett, because it looks so much better in maroon and gray than it does with all that ugly blue and gold all over it. It's going to be a ball that's going to be kicked on the ground. That's going to be a roller, and he is going to be... Sort of close line at about the 30 yard line. They're going to give him a 33. Yeah, Iverson Brazil, they're trying to get to the wall, uh, unable to make it all the way across the field. Just got absolutely ragdolled by the Rockdale defender. So 623 left on the clock. Your offense will come back out. They have got to find something to get going because nothing has worked. Yeah, we, we've got to be able to get the ball to our playmakers in space, and we just we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able to get Bynum free in space at all, and we haven't been able to get it to Hemp Hill or Spikes uh, at all. Twin receivers to each side as Zinert takes a snap, looks to throw to his right quick pass. That ball's going to be caught. He'll go towards the sideline. They're going to try to hold him out, but he does manage to get out. Yes, this is complete for number seven, Tavarius Crittenden. Tackle made by number six, Drayton Costa. So after the completion, it's going to be enough for about four yards. So it'll be second and six coming up. Second and six. Just trying to get the ball to our playmakers out there in space and let them do something with it. Twins to either side. It's Zinert again looking for a quick pass. This ball's thrown out, but that's short. Incomplete. Quick pass is complete, broken up by number seven, Tucson Raven. So on third six. down at six. Six fourteen on the clock. Again with a twin receiver set on third and six. And Zyner looking to throw again. Another quick pass out towards the right. He's going to make the first man miss. He should have a first down. Down the sideline he goes. And then finally out of bounds across midfield. And I believe that's, uh, I believe that's uh, Casey and Goolsby uh, on the catch. Goolsby or Sanchez. Those guys are the, <laughs> the short guy. They're, they're both built so much alike. They're in such same skill set. Uh, and, the, and the two and the nine. <laughs> it looks a lot, when, when it gets wrinkled up on their jersey, it looks a lot alike there. So. And the very, very far sideline. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and they're far away as they can be. 6.05 on the clock. First to 10 out for the Ullman. And Zyner under heavy pressure just lets this one go. That's out of bounds. Incomplete. I think we were trying to set up a, the screen there, uh, but he felt like uh, the linebacker had went with Bynum there, and so he was just trying to dump it off to somebody else uh, to save the play there. Second and 10 from the Rockdale 49-yard line. 6.01 on the clock. Yeoman trailing 35-9. to nine. They've gone to some real quick slants here on this drive. It worked a couple of times. Now they've got two receivers off to the right side and a two-back set. That's going to be a direct snap to the tailback around the right side, and he'll pick up about five yards on the carry, maybe six. Number eight, Farrell Hempel, the ball carry. Hempel just trying to get as many yards as he can and get out and save as much time on the clock as he can. It is going to be a third and four for the omen here. 5.47 on the clock. 
This is a big third down here for the O offense. What do you need to see here in the final five minutes or so? You know, we just need to see that we're going to continue to fight, uh, that we're not just going to lay down for and, and let this clock, this, this game just be over. Put receivers to each side here on a third down for the Omen. Zyner looking to throw, now being chased. Still being chased. And he's going to fire one towards the sideline. And that's incomplete. Late flag over there. Maybe a, a rough in the passer. Yeah, two men were giving chase to Zyner. And he has been just under duress all night long. Waiting on the call. Push the foul. Ripping the passer, number six of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So roughing the passer penalty. And Rockdale, Rockdale coach is Rockdale's very upset. coach is hot. He <laughs> is very. not happy with his linebacker that, that got in there and roughed the passer. He wants to get this ball game over with. He wants to keep this clock rolling. Uh, he wants to keep us behind the chains. And he doesn't like that uh, his linebacker made a mistake there and gave us a fresh set of downs. It does. It puts the omen inside the Tiger 30-yard line from the 28 on first and 10. Snyder steps out on the first man's way, then launches one of the end zone. That ball, though, is going to be picked off by the Tigers in the end zone. Zane had some, some pressure early there and was able to step up into the pocket and kind of avoid it. Uh, tried to launch one downfield, kind of a jump ball situation there. And, and uh, the Rockdale defender just had too good a positioning uh, on the yo receiver. So after the turnover, he'll come back as a touchback. After the interception into the end zone. Tigers has the ball, first and ten. Five thirty-five on the clock. And it's Tiger football. Thirty-five to nine is the score. The Tigers have really, really run some clock off right now. Yeah, I would expect to see a heavy dose of Cameron Valdez at this point in the ball game. And he is going to get the call here. Stutter steps his way across the, up to the 25-yard line, about a five-yard gain. And I would suspect that uh, it'd be of the variety of, that he just ran where it's straight ahead uh, to make sure that he doesn't go anywhere near the out-of-bounds line and keep that clock going. That was his 27th carry of the night. 133 yards, two scores. And he just collapsed to the field. I don't mean just went in. I mean, he collapsed like somebody shot him with a gun. He's got a bad cramp. Yeah, and he is dragging that leg. I mean, he looks like a sniper got him, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't mean to joke about that type of stuff, but man, that, that was. What a game for a, a superstar that you will see playing on Saturdays very, very soon. The result of the play gives the Tigers a second and five. 27 carries, 133 yards. For Cameron Valdez. Tigers still with the football. Second down at 5. Clock is running. Coming up on just about 5 minutes to go. Two receivers off to the left side. One to the right. And 5 minutes. Rockdale Tigers, barring a complete collapse, will have possession of the bell. Hand off here. Scott. Works his way forward for four yards. As you mentioned, that's a former Yeoman with a carry. And, you know, again, I expect to see nothing but heavy dose of run up the middle out of Rockdale here, try to keep that clock rolling. Question is, is Valdez's night done? I would assume so. At four twenty, with four minutes, four and a half minutes to go, I mean, there's no need to put him back in this ball game. They've got it iced. Uh, the Mitchell kid can run it uh, if they don't want to hand it to the Scott. Scott will get the carry. Bounces around the left side. Now he's going to take off across the forty, and finally will stumble down at about the forty-five yard line of Rockdale. The Scott kid is, a, is an excellent runner. He, he, he's really quick. He's really fast. Uh, he just he doesn't necessarily have as good a, 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 a lean as as a, you like to see out of your starting running back. Uh, and of course, he's behind a you know a, a kid that's a you know an all-state top player with Cameron Valdez. Well, you got to think he's relishing his position right now. 
Yeah, yeah. For killing sure, the clock you know. against his former team. Yeah. And, of course, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, the young man moved. It's not like, you know, he, you know, he didn't get a choice in that decision. That's, that's you know, his parent moved. <laughs> it's the call again. Tries to come around the right side, but finds no running room this time to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard out of it. Uh, I think this is Landon Green again on the tackle uh, with Barbo uh, as well. Again, again, I, I, you know, I'm going to brag on those two sophomores again. And, and you know, they're, they're sophomores, Brett. They shouldn't be playing this well at inside a linebacker uh, as they are. Uh, because, you know, physically they're still a year or two behind the, the people they're playing across the other side of the ball. But their mental preparation is, is what I believe allows them to be so successful. Scott's still in the backfield. Second down and nine. Inside of three minutes left in this ball game. Tigers out in front big. Quarterback Mitchell going to keep this one. Tries to spin out. Does spin out of the first tackle, but then it's going to be gang tackled for no gain. And I believe that was Trenton Nixon on the tackle there. Uh, Mitchell, uh, he faked the, the handoff to Scott and kept it himself. Uh, but I tell you, if Trenton didn't get a hold of him right there, that young man was fixing to turn off some big yardage. Third down and ten for the Tigers now, leading 35-9 to nine over the Cameron Yeoman here in the 66th Annual Battle of the Bell. Rockdale milking all the clock they can out of the play clock each play, uh, and obviously it can, just keeping the ball on the ground up the middle here. It'll be about two minutes or so to go by the time this play is done. And it's going to be another handoff here. Spins around and picks up about four yards. Number four, Davey on the top of the ball carry. Not three, actually. Made by number 16, Landon Green. Clock continuing to run inside of two minutes left in this ball game. They won't be long before... If they haven't already tried to take possession of that bell yet. I think they've got to let it go to zero before they can before they can <laughs> haul it off. Four. I don't know if that's in the bylaws somewhere or something, but it is a fourth down here for the Tigers. They are looking to punt, backing up into that formation. It's going to be a low snap, but it's going to be a great kick, and that is going to be angled. The Elman will let it roll, and that'll roll out of bounds inside the tent. What a kick from there by Rockdale. Really, really good punt there by Kobe Mitchell, uh, the Rockdale quarterback. The Yeoman defense just wasn't quite ready for that. Thought, thought that they were maybe going to go for it on that fourth down and, and didn't quite have a, a, a return man back deep enough to field that punt. 119 is all that's left in this ball game. It will be your football. Trailing 35 to 9. I tell you, you have to tip your hat to the Rockdale Tigers tonight, Brett. You know, they came in here back against the wall, having lost to McGregor last week, and, and you know, they just, they were definitely the better team here tonight. Time Rockdale, the second of the half. Tigers now taking a timeout after the punt. Uh, one to relish in, in their victory a little more. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why you take a timeout right here. They have already got a handful of blue over there to take possession of the bell. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's the thing, you know, it usually gets parked right at center of the field, and, and both teams have the opportunity to ring it all they want all night long, and um, unfortunately, Rockdale rang it a lot more tonight than the Yeoman did, and, and they are uh, getting ready to, to haul it over to their side of the, the stadium, and uh, unfortunately, that pretty, uh, that pretty, uh, Yo paint job on it with, with all the the Yo wins chronicled on it uh, is going to be coming off of it uh, very soon. I'm yep. sure. Yeah, they are they are just kind of hovering over the, the bell presently. The bell. First and ten to nine. First and ten from their own nine yard line. Hillman still have the football here, but Trey and Zayert going to let one go. This one's deep. That ball picked off by Kishon Raven of the Rockdale. Who else now working his way? He's going to have a, t- a chance for a defensive touchdown. He does. Takes it all the way back to the house. And that'll add insult to injury. Yeah, it does. And pretty much their entire team that was on the field ran over to the bell right there. Uh, I gotta imagine their coach is not happy about that in the least. Uh, he, he's he's very upset about that. Increases the score to forty-one to nine, one oh seven. 
is all that's left in this ball game, separating the Rockdale Tigers from the Bell. Again, a huge margin in this one, 41 to nine now. A pick six by Kashawn Raven. Now the extra point try here. That kick is up and good, 42 to nine. Tigers are out in front. Just about a minute left in this ball game. You're listening to your football on 105 with the Ranch. Caliber Metal in Cameron, Texas provides all your PBR panel, classic rib panel, and standing seam concealed fastener materials. We also cut standard and custom trim up to 21 feet. We have metal to metal and metal to wood screws, closures, pipe boots, and sealants. We have a quick turnaround with 20 colors in stock. Located at 106 South Washington Avenue, Cameron, Texas. Buy local, 254-605-4110. And mention the ranch, 1051, and receive a 5% discount for new customers. Welcome back here in Rockdale where the Tigers have extended their lead 42 to 9 over the Cameron Yeoman here looking to take possession of the bell back from the Yeoman after being in Cameron for the past two years. Of course it spent a large majority of its existence in Cameron. 44 times in 66 years. Yeah, yeah. We, we've definitely had it more than our fair share, that's for sure. Uh, actually, I heard a story uh, about a year ago that originally when the bell was put in a, as the, the trophy, uh, whatever, that yeah, if a school won it four years in a row, they were supposed to probably keep it. Uh, and that Cameron did that early on, but they said no, that they wanted to, to keep the tradition going. So I don't know if there's any truth to that story or not, but I, I was told that by by a, a, an old Rockdale graduate uh, a few years, a few, about a year or so ago. Hell Tigers will kick off here, and this is going to be look like an onside kick. That definitely would have been the end of the game had they recovered something like that. And it looks like well, maybe they called offsides or something on camera in there. I'm not sure where the flag is was thrown it's a very odd spot for the flag to be thrown on a kickoff and the bell has officially changed hands and the bell has yeah, they, they've hauled it over to their their corner their sideline over here so uh yeah So the bell has changed hands. A substitution penalty against the Rockdale Tigers. It'll back them up five yards, and they'll have to kick again. 107 is all that's left in this ball game. Tigers out in front, 42 to nine. Again, they have taken possession of the bell here in the final minute. And here's going to be a short. Angled kick, field it at the 32-yard line, cutting up field, and then smothered at short of the 40-yard line. Iverson in Brazil again. Just making as much as he can out of a, not a whole lot right there. Well, the Oman can try to put something together here in the final minute. 105 on the clock. It'll be a party in Rockdale tonight. Tigers taking back possession of the bell after two years in Cameron. Also the Tigers' first victory over the Yeoman on the new field. Yeoman will come out with three receivers to the left side for Zyder. Instead he'll hand the ball off. Cutting back and forth and then he's going to be hit into the backfield but should have forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. Inside of a minute left is all that we have. It's like one more snap, Brett. That should be one more snap. It'll be ball game here in Rockdale. Trips off to the right side here. Less than 30 seconds left in the ball game. Hand off up the middle. Sporting his way through, a bunch of defenders, and finally goes down after a Syntex auto first down. Number 36, Keyshawn Johnson, the ball carrier. Keyshawn Johnson didn't even look like he got touched until about 10 yards into that. Yeoman trying to hurry and get one more play in here. 
Less than five seconds to go as they get the snap off. Another handoff here for Johnson, who is going to finally go down, and the Rockdale Tigers will swarm the bell and take possession officially. And that's the game. As this is... The 66th annual Battle of the Bell has come to a close with the Rockdale Tigers knocking out the Cameron Yeoman 42-9 here in Rockdale. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back and get ready to wrap this game up and get you some stats. You're listening to Go Football on 105 with the Ranch. One day they're playing grown-up, the next day they are one. And as time goes by, the cost of college continues to rise. You know that college is important, but that expense may seem out of reach. We can help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Melanie Romine. Let's work together on strategies to help you tackle growing college expenses. Stop by our office. 